should shut up. Hello. Hi, I'm talking to myself, apparently. <laughs> Hello. Episode 54-ish, maybe 55. I'm getting no, drunk. It's, it's 54 for sure, Z. Mm -hmm. I'm actually not drunk, but I probably should be. I have like a terrible headache. Oh, no. Is it Probably stress? accumulated stress from... Yes. <laughs> my life currently as we speak oh she's in, in the cool kids club now and she doesn't I don't like wanna be. she doesn't like it <laughs> i'm too busy also, for the cool kids club also i want everybody to be friends and they keep not being and i'm i have to accept that not everybody needs to be friends but i would like more public niceness maybe i don't know public respect even if it's respectfully disagreeing or respectfully having a different opinion um, I think polarizing subjects is a newer trend in our country and it needs to come on guys. We need to have like a healthy debate here. <laughs> um, yes, the assistants are joining us today because this is a not safe for work podcast. Oh, and good night. Thank you for popping in for a minute. I just can't believe that you do that, but please go to bed. I know. <laughs> uh, small towns here, Lou's here, Janice here. Thank God. Thank God I showed up. <laughs> Woo. Uh, Lisa Richmond from the UK. Woo Eat a scone for me, buddy. And BNS Reptilia. I, I don't know. Where is the podcast tour? I've heard. I, that's his name now. The Sorry. Will's hella heat. He'll be in. Sometimes he doesn't come till later. Maybe he has a life outside of his attendance to all no these lives. No way, dude. <laughs> Um, oh, so, balls and strikes is here too. Good afternoon or morning. Good, yeah, or evening if you're you. in the UK because we are tra time travelers <laughs> <laughs> all around the globe, different times. It's amazing. Uh, um, right. so as you all have seen, if you're watching and listening, the uh, Snakes and the Fat Man 15 Minutes of Lame contest is coming up pretty quickly. So I will be promoting that pretty hard. My first um, interview, I'm kind of promoting that, will be on Proper I Royals. Have put the link up. Do you remember the days? I do. I sent it to you so you could put I it know, up. I know. I forgot. I did it's... my homework. Oh. Oh, fuck. man. Okay. So. This will be on my Instagram if you want to see these written down. But I will be with Adam on his podcast, Proper Royals. Um, I have a question. Be... Stop. Stop. Did, did Adam go like, girl, you need to get rid of them titties and <laughs> keep your <laughs> We'll get to that just a second because somebody okay. asked if the assistants would be here. So November 8th, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, and this is going to be a family friendly. So the assistants will not be coming. And yes, mm. Adam prefaced <laughs> the accepting of me asking if I could come on his show with you are welcome to come, but we are a family friendly only show. And so I've had some fun comments of people saying, oh, Janice not going to be able to hack family friendly. Jessica, did we do family friendly for quite a while? Like the assistants are new. I, I can put them away. I do know how. Um, I can not swear. I do know how. Um, and I, I have how. zero issue with him wanting his to be family friendly. Ours is not safe for work. That's how we like to do it. But however people do it on their own podcast, there needs to be no hate on that and no like, whatever. Adam is doing his thing. And I'm going to go and be grateful that he's letting me be there. And I'm going to respect his, um, his boundaries and his his purview you know if he wants to be family friendly that's fine you know we have kids our kids watch our podcasts and if he doesn't want titties of someone he's not married to and swearing hello the um, tatas need to wave back there we go um so this is my podcast so i get to do what i want on my podcast but when somebody is gracious enough to let you onto their podcast you need to respect them and their boundaries and that's what i plan to do yeah so i guys, wasn't saying you you weren't gonna try <laughs> try people just think i can't do it so i mean place your bets we'll see because mm -hmm. it is live so if i uh, put my foot in my mouth you'll all everyone get to see will it. see yes excellent what was the next uh date 
Um, after that, I will be waking up at the butt crack of dawn. Um, Girl, to... how are you going to do it? I don't know. And I also have to like put on some makeup. <laughs> I don't know what it's going to be like. It's going to be like a smear, like a. Like, <laughs> I think I just might show up in like my robe with a cup of coffee oh, and just yeah. be like, yo, man, maybe just roll out of bed and do like the whole last night's makeup thing. I haven't decided, but um, November, Wednesday, November 16th, 7 a.m. Eastern time. Yes, that is 4 a.m. my time. <laughs> and it's a school day. This is this is how much I want to win this contest, people. Um, what's in your cup with Brian? I will be um, on his show and he will be talking about the contest and whatever else we come up with it's 4 a.m so hopefully it's uh any <laughs> anything goes <laughs> and then after that i will be on the uh reptile gumbo and that's tuesday november 29th 8 p.m eastern time and then sean bradley has offered to let me be on bullshit after dark friday december 2nd at 9 p.m um there's also going to be like a contest debate on one of Chris Eaton's Whoa, lives. I didn't know that yes, was happening. Like a presidential debate. Um, he's going to have three of those. And so I'm waiting to hear which one I'm assigned to. Once I know, I will put it on the <sighs> list. Um, I will you also better win the debater. Hey. Hey, hey, he's... Will, he's here. The most okay. beautiful whore on the internet is back. Right. So I don't even know if they're going to have winners, but I was like, if we're having a debate, there better be at least episode winners. Um, but I'll be on one of those and I'm going to be promoting the heck out of it. So if you see a post for me, like it, comment, share it to groups you're in, whatever, please help. And uh, it will be much appreciated. I would really, really, really like to be the winner. They have yet to have a woman winner and I would like it to be me really badly. So I will be doing a lot of obnoxious shilling everywhere. <laughs> It's a lot of interviews now. It's a lot of interviews hey, now. You have to it's like think of, of like a topic for each one where you will save a topic for the next one. Independent. I don't know if that's yeah, even possible. I, I don't I think it'll be fine. I don't think it'll be like the same thing over and over again because it's different people and they have different styles. And you know, I could I could chat with pretty much anyone, so I'm not really super worried about it, but I will, yeah, I'll make a point to have something that I can Talk share about. new each time yeah yeah i mean you could do it obviously like there's thousands of things but you could be like on this podcast i'm going to talk about women in the hobby and this one it'll be about kiki projects or whatever and this one it'll be being a new a covid baby breeder and the perceptions like there's almost like a way to like partition yourself into categories i don't you'd have to like consult with each person about what topics they think are yeah the and most we have relevant. been we have been talking behind the scenes about um, what we'll talk about because obviously the contest will take like five seconds and usually they have like an hour show. So <laughs> you know what you have to do to get my vote. Okay, so Peach Chris, emoji. Eaton, <laughs> Chris Eaton specifically said to the group, there's like a private chat for all the contestants, that um, anyone that is offering things. Peach emojis. Peach emojis for votes will be automatically disqualified. So I can't offer blowjobs. I can't offer nudes. I can't offer phone sex. I can't do any of those things. Mm -hmm. And I think that it was directed at me. So I don't know. Chris Eaton, if you're watching, was that directed specifically at me or was that like an everybody rule? But yeah, so um, I'm going to have to keep it classier <laughs> than that. Well, uh, good luck. Uh, I'll try to help share when i can um i haven't seen anybody else trying as hard yet i don't know if it's because voting hasn't started yet but they i think that people are saving it up it's, i mean there's another okay. two weeks i just wanted to get some things on the calendars because it i'm school full time and it could fill up or you know you can't ask them hey gonna be on your show and then expect to be on their show in the next week like mm -hmm. i just uh-oh Nobody's going to vote for you now because you're that? Okay, you're back. Oh, you're not back. Did, did I freeze? Yeah, you're back now. Sorry. Okay, sorry. She's being courteous, everybody, by freezing. Being courteous. Yeah, so um, I have to do it fairly, which is fine. Um, I do want to win by my own merits, not because the assistants were there. Mm -hmm. um, 
but I really, really do want to win. And so I'm going to do my best. If I don't win or if it looks like I'm not going to win, then I might start um, promoting a different, like a, whatever the top female contestant is, because we've had two dudes. Let's let's have a woman. And Chris always spouts that he's a supporter of women in the hobby. And so I'd like to see one win. So if it's not me, it better be a freaking woman is all I'm saying. Uh, I think we said this, but the like the hypothetical front runner is Reggie's Urban Jungle. Because he's just yes. the most famous, right. hard air quotes on that one, but like maybe the most well-recognized. Yeah, it'll be interesting. But you can still speak. win, for sure. The um, public vote is only 25% because they've had people try to botify the vote in the past. And so mm -hmm. now that's only 25%. And then there's three judges and Shane is one of the judges because he's a alumni winner, but this just because he's a sponsor of our podcast does not mean that I'm getting his vote. So if I want his vote, he's made it very clear that I have to win it with effort. Okay. You girls better Two. behave. Who, yeah, go who's ahead. here? Two podcast gods are watching and can cancel you. Who's who's a podcast god that's here? I don't think they're actually here. They're just being like hypothetically they could watch. Oh, okay. And then we would get canceled. Yeah. That's okay. I think we're uncancelable. Just saying. Um, that's why I'm not in anybody's network or wasn't really like requiring their help or attention to start. We just did it. And we, we do just it. did it without asking anyone permission. <laughs> Um, Will's Hella Heat said that he's down to Jana and Redwood. Um, you can vote daily. So if you have more than one person that you like, you absolutely can vote for a different person, like alternating days or whatever. But um, vote for who you think should win. Like, it's not necessarily going to be me. Hopefully, if it's not me, you're going to vote for another woman. But vote for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Will says he is in no click and he is whore to all. What an egalitarian. Sharing is caring. Says Sharing Will is he. caring. I love it. So <laughs> Where do you Marshall, vote, Jana? Yeah, it's going to be on Snakes and the Fat Man's website. There will be a link in my bio once it goes live. It runs from November 17th to December 24th. Uh, winner is announced Christmas Day. Um, so for the duration of the contest, it will be the, I have like a link tree in my bio on Instagram. When you click on it, it will be the first thing and it'll say snakes in the fat man contest. Um, and it'll take you directly there. So you can go and vote every single day and you don't have to vote for the same person every single day, but vote for me every single day. Okay. Got it. <laughs> and if you see stuff. Is in sorry. school right now. Oh, you gotta turn it off. The titties are too much for <laughs> It's too much for school. What are you doing? Pay attention in class. Unless you're the teacher. Then totally He's the teacher. To. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thanks for joining. Thank you for joining. Hopefully they're that not listening to us swear. Here. Yay. Right. Thank you. Did you so if you a... do, sorry, we Go have to ahead. get to the podcast, but really quickly. So if you do see me sharing things to Facebook or on Instagram, if you guys would reshare it in your stories, if you're on Facebook, if you would share it to the ball python or the reptile groups that you're a part of. It would really help me out because it just looks so tacky if I'm the one that shares it everywhere, every single day. It would be nice if people were sharing for me so that I didn't look so obnoxiously chilly. So if you see it, please promote it as well. That would be great. Marshall says 25% seems low for the people's vote. Uh, I, I agree. I think it's just because of the, the scamminess that happened last time. Yeah, um, because you could win the people's vote and then you could completely lose the contest. Correct. And uh, then um, MJ is the tiebreaker if it's like a 50-50 thing. Hi, Jamie. I think you're new here, right? Yep. On a finally, live? Finally able to catch a live. All right. Do we have a sponsor, Jan? We do, and he even stayed up late so he could say hi in our in our comments. What a nice guy he is. I was going to play it, but I can't. I have to turn off the audio. All right, but I won't. So let's just talk about Wookiee for a second. So this was the year we were going to all buy into Wookiee. How many Wookiees <laughs> do you have? Goose egg. Me How many too. Wookiees do you have? Oh, okay. Dang Isn't it. that funny? 
What no. happened? It's not funny. It's not funny at all. It's sad. It's tragic. <sighs> all right. So this is a yellow belly red stripe Wookiee clown he got. Uh, still really nice. But is your opinion of Wookiee the same now? This is like a post Wookiee reflection talk. I still love Wookiee. I still Even the it. way Wookiee grows up. Like that it doesn't look as awesome as an adult. But I mean, well, not it many, turns brown. Not many things do, but it's still. I, I think we can find the right combinations where it doesn't turn into a turd when it grows up. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it looks bad. I just think it looks brown. And a large part of the appeal was that the GHI Mojave ones were GHI Mojave colored. But the, the Wookiee forces them to turn brown. Still on my to buy list. Okay. Along with like acid and cypress. So. Um, oh my God. Can I, this is totally off topic. I saw a super chocolate spider on Morph Market last night. That's not possible, right? It's not supposed to be, but guess what? It looked different than a chocolate spider. So what the fuck was it? Interesting. Who, who is fucking up right now? I should have brought the picture, but I was like, this is hurting my brain too much. Because that would mean... Okay, well, now you need to pull it up because I have to see it. No, I'm right not. it's going to take like five minutes to go find Because it's just like randomly loose in Morph Market. But oh. I'll post Next it in the show notes or something. Okay, yes, please do. So it could um, either be another gene or the people who think it's allelic are wrong. <laughs> I don't even know. Because we know absolutely a spot nose and cypress are allelic. And we have that evidence of a cypress spider being allelic. So chocolate and spider something should be allelic. is right. There's no such thing as a super chocolate spider. So somebody write in, write in. Um, yeah, Jamie commented about the contest that the first year somebody held a snake giveaway and the second year somebody set up bots for the vote. Yeah, that's why he said that you cannot offer animals, but then he also said you cannot offer photos or sexual favors. <laughs> Bummer. Yes, people suck. Nice. Um, Shane Kelly, Small Town Exotics. Check them out. Is confusion like hurricane or like acid? I can never acid. remember. Acid. Oh, that would kill two birds with one stone. I might actually hit you up for that. Balls mm -hmm. and Strikes has a clutch coming out. This confusion cypress red strip. So stay tuned for that. So Will's Hell Heat says, I keep hearing blackhead is allelic. I'm assuming he means with cypress, but not chocolate. But we know for sure that Cypress and Spot Nose are allelic. So that means it must be allelic with the like Spot Nose complex. So Spot Nose Chocolate, Wookiee, Sp Cypress. And then we know for sure the Spider complex has its stuff. But we had that... What was it? It was like a YouTube video of a Spider Cypress that produces just Spider Cypresses. So... So you're saying is there some ambiguity and it may not necessarily right? Who is wrong complex. in this situation? Because we've we've heard it both ways, <laughs> and then Canova came back and was like, they both of complexes are allelic. Now we have an animal that's a triple, hypothetically. Um, Lisa wants to know if it looks different because of polymorphism. <sighs> it looks uh, like a super chocolate spider to me. So it's either a chocolate, other non-allelic gene Ooh. like mahogany spider. So it looks like a double chocolate, but it's not. You know, or it's something else completely. Marshall says it was reptiles. Do we do I have to look it up? You do have to look it up now that we've talked about it for five plus minutes. Nope. Uh I just I'm um typing Marshall instead of <laughs> mm. talk about something while I look, please. Something while you look. Um, I bombed my bio test this week. <laughs> what? Why? What? How did that happen? Um, so I spent the whole weekend studying nice. and doing schoolwork because usually my kids are with my ex. And he decided it would be cute to bring them home early at like between lunch and dinner because he's supposed to bring them home at bedtime. And so 
I was supposed to be studying during that time, but he brought them home and one of my kids was sick. So he was like, hey, here's a sick kid. Bye. <laughs> so I was uh, dealing with my sick kid instead of finishing studying. And I thought it might be okay. And then I took a test and I was like feeling like I was going to die through the whole test. And I got home and I had like fever and was not okay. And uh, promptly passed out. So my ex took the two that weren't sick trick or treating and I was asleep until he brought them back at like seven. So I was not feeling good. And, um, hours of my studying were compromised by children. So mm -hmm. that sucks. <laughs> good thing. It's not like all of my grade or anything, but, uh, ew, getting a, a 68 on a test is, I mean, that's probably the worst I've ever done on a test in my whole life. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty, uh, yeah, that's not norm my normal, like, whoa. <laughs> anyway, wow, that's a cool animal. Yes, it is. But it, I, I could have brought up a chocolate spider. But it's definitely more dark and busy than a single gene chocolate spider. So that sounds does it, like... Does it say the pairing in the comments? No. So H&H &H says that Chocolate and spot nose lilac. So we know that for sure. That's 100% true. But people, including proven. Canova, have started to confirm that the minor wobblers, so spot nose chocolate, Wookiee, Cypress, are also a lilac with the spider complex. So have we spider... put Bongo in with Cypress and spot nose yet? Or it's still unknown? There's a Freedom Breeder video where they say that Bongo is a lilac with spider. In, in their opinion at that moment okay so uh, we're getting mixed messages from different people at this time but we, we know the ones that are for sure <laughs> rn says c's and d's get degrees that's right oh. your doctor who is treating you could definitely have passed with a 2.0 um, but these are all prerequisites for a nursing program. And so I have to achieve a certain GPA per class in order to apply. And if I don't hit that, I right. have to retake the class. Um, I still have like an 88 in the class. Like I'm totally doing fine because I think I only need like an 80 for the to be able to use it to apply to the nursing program. And so it's a setback. It'll be fine. I'm doing really well in that class other than that one test. So I think it'll be fine. But I do have to get a a correct GPA point in order to use it to apply to the nursing program. So as my schedule is set now, I'm taking 15 credits each quarter until I can apply next January, not the one in like a month and a half. Um, and so if I have to retake one of those classes, it sets my whole schedule back and I wouldn't be able to apply till next September. So like 18 months instead of a year. And plus the classes that I am signing up for, next week for the winter term I have to have passed these classes so if it's just it's I need to do it there isn't really any other choice mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all right Shane Kelly check them out Wookie's still cool yes yes uh, it is we'll see if those stupid complexes and I still need to clear up. go out to Tennessee and steal his collection <laughs> Bang, bang. It does look like GHI. Like, I do see the GHI-E-ness to it. I would mm -hmm. love to see the pictures of the pairing. I would love to see what the pairing was. Mm -hmm. It's very, very interesting to me. It, I, yeah, I uh, just saw it when I was browsing and I was like, got mad at it. And then I moved on. <laughs> no, it's totally fine. We can keep moving on. All right, let's get into this topic because I have to leave promptly at 2.30. Sorry, because I have to pick up Alex today. Georgia, Kids, man, Georgia, Georgia, Georgia. What are you doing to us? Georgia officially passed their ban on Burmese, African rocks, and tegus. In addition to, I think it was Asian water monitors and some other random animals, turtles. So is this pretty similar to the ban that went through in Florida? Yeah, but instead okay. of like like ratcheting up the suffering by being like you're gonna need to be a have a certain permit first and then we'll pit tag them, it went straight from totally legal to 
not totally legal, legal, but the animals you have are grandfathered in, but can't be bred and need Yikes. to be pit tagged. So we didn't talk about this, and I wondered if I should feel guilty about it. What do you think? Like, before it was passed. I swear there was, like, maybe three weeks where it was, like, announced, and, and I shared it. I share all kinds of U.S. ARC stuff. Maybe we purpose. should have, like, a U.S. ARC section on our podcast, and we'll just say the alerts that are happening. And Yeah, and we do area. sometimes. We do sometimes. Sometimes, but just, like, so, sometimes stuff gets gets away. And so I don't then think I'm you like, have to feel guilty. It's not just our job to be responsible for the did information. You, did that's... you watch that Brass Man video where he was yelling at everyone? I mean, it, it is our responsibility to care and to, for, to like to share it and stuff, but also like the two of us alone cannot stop the Georgia ban. You know what I mean? So I, I think that maybe we, maybe we could have, Jana. I'm going to tell you why we could have a U.S. arc section in our podcast going forward. But um, I don't think that you need to lose sleep over it. Yeah, I didn't and lose feel sleep, like it was completely like... your fault. So officially. The Georgia DNR received more support for the ban than opposition. So that means Georgia yeah. stakeholders of any kind of reptile were outnumbered by just random randos who were like, yeah, sure, go ahead. Yeah. There was so not that's very not good. Outrage. Why would they yeah. ever care if the total number of... The other problem is we're not, I, we're not citizens of Georgia. So like, even if we come in and be like, well, this was dumb our opinion matters far less than an actual homeowner so georgia. the representation in georgia sucked it this time <laughs> because florida they came out i mean all over the country they came out from florida they had people waiting in line to talk that they ran out of time and didn't get to talk like we need to make sure that we're having that same energy in right, every but they, state. and they still passed it in florida but so. at least we felt like we gave it a college try, you know, like in Georgia, they were just like, womp, womp. oh, well, well, it was very fast. So, like, it, there's a lot of things that have, like, contributed to this stuff. Um, and I just wanted. I was I'll just tell you, like, my thought process here after it passed. I was like, oh, that sucks ass. And then I was like, oh, let me just, like, think about things a little harder. Like, where are we messing up? in terms of our our outreach or how we're talking to the DNR or how we're talking to the general John Q public. And I Googled around and they had like a very strong pre-ban news presence in Georgia. They made very, like, yeah, very political news. Lots insertion. of like AP releases. Like, look at the scary fucking Tegu dudes. Oh, and Tegu's and there was, so and I looked for like positive ones and there wasn't really, it was just... Like right. John well, Q. I mean, Public got one message that in Georgia. Maybe there's more news reports, but this is just like you YouTube Georgia reptile news, and it was mostly <laughs> bad stuff. Well, and that's where US Arc is supposed to come in and help. But if they don't have the support of the community, they can't do that. Or if they don't have donations, they can't do that. So in order to counteract this kind of um political news they have to have our support so that's why i'm saying that if maybe we do a blurb then then we could be doing our right too. yeah yes i'm not sure what our our personal culpability is and then i this is the exact um powerpoint that the dnr presented to john q public initially and i wanted to talk through the science a little bit because i think this is why they sort of came to the table with what they already knew they wanted. And it was just a matter of convincing people what, that what they wanted was true. Or that what they, they wanted to get it passed. Like they have the, the preconception based on all of their member states, all their neighbors. And they're like, let's do it. Fuck it. But the science isn't actually that good. So a good counter program of education could have save some of these species and also good biosecurity and we'll find out why so this we're going to do berms first and then tegus poor tegus <laughs> <laughs> well poor berms i almost think i still have this opinion and maybe this opinion is wrong but if you're going to get a big snake over 10 feet you better get a berm because like that's the the better it is the better but one. i think um with the the ban in florida that now they have 
basically an excuse to ban it elsewhere because it went through. And so they can like cite Florida as an example. And plus the media campaign in Florida with the destruction of the Everglades and stuff, people are getting behind that. And so I think that the writing on the walls for berms is, is there. And I think if we want to keep our ability to um, breed and have these reptiles, especially berms, we're going to have to come up with our own media campaign. We're really going to have to push because there's years of media campaigning to the mm -hmm. general public that they're already like, Oh yeah, those big scary things that are ruining the environment. You know, like there's already a public opinion on it when, you know, in most things reptilian, there isn't a, a huge re a public opinion on it, but this one it's, I feel like it's an easy sell for them. Right. But their own science makes it not an easy sell to me. And does my opinion count? Not really. But let's talk about it. So here's their own PowerPoint. And they're like uncertainty. They lead their PowerPoint bullet with the word uncertainty. Can That's you because zoom into the page. Uh, yes. Thank you. And that's because this map is from that stupid USGS white paper that got republished. That is wrong, frankly. It's like these are the places where berms could live. It's like the middle of the nowhere in the Arizona desert. <laughs> Hello, yeah. excuse me. Whoa, yeah, <laughs> sir. This is an Arby's. This isn't just your made-up <laughs> shit. And so, th these kind of range maps that are constructed based on like, uh, lots of things that aren't in real life. Usually, they'll do like temperature extremes and. A combination of like moisture and the paper does acknowledge like you know the west might be a little dry it's like no shit it might be a little dry and the north might be a little cold and it's um, also like no shit yeah and so they know that even texas might be a little hot for them like it's not moist enough in most areas like they're a tropical species right well so here's how it gets complicated one there are Burmese pythons that can live in places where there is a winter cooling period, like in like the lowland Nepal, southern China, parts of India. But we imported ones from the tropical ass part of their range. Yeah. Myanmar. <laughs> you know, so those <laughs> ones are like the tropical. That's why Florida is so fucked with invasive species is because it's like reptile heaven. Right, but it's not really, because even South Florida experiences a frost every decade or so. And the berms there die extremely hard. This is cold-induced mortality of invasive Burmese pythons in South Florida. Our Burmese pythons that we have in captivity are from a place that never experiences frost. They're not from the northern part of their range where they have sort of have some adaptive ability. Right. So, so these fuckers, they are so dumb. Every time it's cold... They're like, I think I should sit in the sun. Extra. It's 20 cool. degrees out. I'm going to yeah. keep sitting in the sun. I'm not going to go find like a wor warm burrow underground. Right. They, none of them do. There's a famous paper from South Carolina. I don't remember the, the title where they gave Burmese pythons heated refugia. And they're like, please go in so you don't die. They don't. Because they, they don't. think that, you know, these behaviors are encoded genetically. Right. Those snakes think that sitting in the sun makes them warm even if doing that will kill them they're not that bright they have three <laughs> brain cells and two of them are busy the last one is in charge of all other functions they die and they die precipitously they do do a little better if there's like a lot of man-made structures that they can just like accidentally stumble into but the further north you go and the more man-made structures you interact with the more likely you have a hard frost so i don't think the Burmese pythons that we accidentally let go a long time ago, or maybe on purpose, whatever, it depends on your opinion, will ever, even with global warming changes in our lifetimes, slip that far out of Florida. So does it really matter if you keep it berm in Georgia? Maybe. And here's why. Oh, worms. Holy fuck. Gross. <laughs> Gross. Ew. So some butt nugget a long time ago <laughs> let go butt a nugget. Asian snake, probably a berm, that was 
actively infected with pentastomes. And pentastomes are... Oh, it's sick. Just put it outside. It'll be fine. <laughs> Let it go. Nature will heal it. They're they're like a, a degenerate crab. Um, they're like not quite crustaceans. They like... are in arthropoda. Okay, you meant a different kind of crab. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, so some people put them in crustaceans as like degenerated literal crustaceans but they're probably best sit like as like a cousin group in arthropoda because they have a cuticle they are a they look like a worm but they're not really a helminth they have a, an interesting life cycle like here's a is this big enough no can we zoom hang on mm. hey, i'll just get my glasses but you should zoom into it no you don't need to read it i'll point to the pretty pictures well zoom in anyway I don't think I actually can on this because it's just a, a, a JPEG oh, okay. on a website. Well, okay. glasses help. So eggs and larvae need to get into a, a intermediate host. This intermediate host could be a mammal in some species, a fish in some species, an insect in some species, or a bird. The <laughs> worm <laughs> needs to crawl Sorry. around and find somewhere to <laughs> fuck things up. Usually it's like a liver or spleen or the mesenteric system it needs to hang out there and it little it insists it's disgusting everybody google it i didn't bring like the worst pictures possible to this Thank party you. but i had to it. see them so my permanent <laughs> damage needs to be spread to you thank you for that by the way so yes. they're in this little innocent little mouse or whatever poor little mousey they, they go through some instars so they shed um and they get ready to, to wreck shit but they're waiting for the mouse to get eaten by a predator or wreck the bird it Ralph. Or the fish. yes and at that time they get into the final host which pentastomes are 90 percent snake um parasites and the others are felids and canines so there are certain ones that will go into dogs but use the intermediate host of ungulates <laughs> <laughs> and there's certain ones that get into cats and their middle middle host will be like rabbits or whatever yeah. so they'll they'll burrow out of the food item burrow out of the uh, digestive tract uh, burrow. we're gonna have nightmares tonight we're, we're still that. going we're because we're still burrowing they burrow into the lungs normally, oh. but sometimes the oral cavity of the snake and there they like drink blood uh, they like have hooks on their face and they just slatch on and they drink blood so they cause once Those they're in the vampire bugs. <laughs> Look, Google the pictures later, Jenna. No, and so they're not. drinking blood and they're releasing eggs. And sometimes the eggs and larvae even hatch in the snake. And they just like, they either it's like, like predator all over again. Oh well, God. they either like puke it up or they'll swallow it into their own digestive tract and poop it out. And those eggs or larvae are waiting around for somebody to come put it in their digestive tract. Hopefully the, the intermediate host, which is, a little thing but sometimes they get into people they get into people quite a lot no people no, are licking their snakes stop licking them stop ah, it i can't cover my ears <laughs> and so in people no! we're not getting ready to go get eaten so the the larvae are like i don't know where to go so they'll still try to go to the same kind of places like the liver the spleen and the mesenteric system but nobody's no snake is coming to eat this human so that the little insisted babies will eventually die but we don't do anything we're just like this little gross thing is just going to stay there. So unless it causes you pain, they don't even bother chopping it out. They're just like, that's your friend now, your dead friend in your body, and you're going to keep that forever. Do not lick your snakes. Do not lick their buttholes. Do not lick their face holes. Please. Oh my <laughs> gosh, I might throw up. I don't like bugs at all, people. Like, I can look at some gnarly shit. Not bugs. <clears throat> Good thing, though. Pentastomes. Very easy to treat. Very easy to treat. So if that person 30, 40 years ago who had a wild-caught berm who was infected with pentastomes, which are native to their range, he could have just treated them. And then when that snake either escaped or was released, it would not have introduced the Southeast Asian version of pentastomes to South Florida. That person did not. They performed bad biosecurity. And now we have introduced a novel parasite into a environment that we don't know what it's going to do. Is that an environment a, where it can thrive? Yes, because it turns out 
And you can treat pentastones with ivermectin, by the way. Um, it worked pretty great. So it found intermediate hosts that it liked to live in. So the eggs would come out of the very first Burmese python that was infected, got into mammals. It liked the mammals. Those mammals were eaten by other things. And it, it also spilled over into um, native snakes. So it could, could go into native snakes too. And you're like, yeah. well, that's not that bad because there are pentastomes that are native here, which the berms can also get. But it turns out because our native snakes are naive, they have not evolved enough, you know, immunal response to them. So they tend to get wrecked harder by this non-native pentastome species than they would if they because were the dealing with their own. To try to right. So... And then the berms are acting like a like a spillover reservoir. So they will have a lot because they're used to it. They will put a lot of eggs into the environment. The native ones are like, fuck. And then they, they keep getting like overdosed by their presence to berms. So currently, can you see that? Yeah. Okay. So black dots are berms. Yellow dots are berms with this species of pentastome. This one over here is native species that were hit by cars. And then the same thing. Yellow is pentastomes. Black dots is no pentastomes. The red mark is like core Burmese python range. And the orange is sort of like emerging range. Like okay. could, they, could they make it there? So that means the pentastomes are outpacing the berms. And will okay. continue to outpace berms. Because they're getting into natives and they're moving. Somebody calculate like 20 miles a year. So... Even if the berms will never live up here because we have the dumb berms that stand outside when it's cold and die. Even if you released a berm just for a summer and it died that winter, you could accidentally a introduce of... a lot of natives in Georgia. And so that, so Georgia, smartly, not smartly, um, that was their main concern. Ooh. They know they're uncertain about this. We're uncertain. So they think we're a bunch of barbarians <laughs> that, that let all of our snakes be full of worms. and But we're not. Because you need the, the eggs and larvae of an infected snake to be transmitted to a rodent to be refed to another snake to complete the life cycle. Do you know any ball python keeper or berm keeper who regularly puts snake poop in their <laughs> rodent shed? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, and and since berms haven't been imported from the wild since 2012, it's illegal. Nobody's berms have this worm, so they are making like a fake, fake thing news. To be... Don't say that. <laughs> it's a re it's a real problem, but all of our berms don't have this problem. We needed to like come tell them like this is a concern that a concern that none of our berms will ever happen. If my berm gets out, it's gonna die. Because it's, it's too cold for him. Because he's a dummy. He also doesn't have worms. And I can prove it because I could PCR it. I could so you don't you swap. That it's a risk because the um, infected populations in southern Florida are moving north. So 20, I, what 10, I'm saying is a here. pet keeper's berm in Georgia it does not make that happen faster or slower. Because the berms don't have it in captivity. Oh, you're saying that taking drugs. away our right to have them has nothing right. to do with preventing them. They think them we have a bunch of gross up. berms. And I'm saying we don't. We have beautiful, pure berms. But we had to come to the DNR and be like, we know that that's what's happening out there is a problem, but we're not contributing to that problem. Right. And instead, they think we're all a bunch of gross people who like uh, have gross Hang berms. out with worm filled berms. Right. And then somehow <laughs> transfer snake poop into our rat cages to complete the life cycle. So they were using this work, this problem, as like their main thrust for being like, can't have any more berms. So they could make up this sort of weird logical leap for lots of species and lots of diseases and lots of parasites. And it gets colder in Georgia than it does in Florida. They get a frost every year, don't they? Yeah, those berms are dead. Yeah, for okay. sure. So like they're pretty much protected just because of their weather. Yes. Irrespective. So, so Georgia of is more worms. worried about this, the worm part, because, like, hypothetically, the worms Are could get out in the environment. Correct. And it would be fine. They can use the native host. They know that this is bullshit and it's not a real reason to ban it. They're just making this up as like an extra reason to ban it, in my opinion. 
So that means someone a long time ago who didn't worm their snakes when they got them in wild caught is responsible for all this stuff. Congratulations. So now, do you worm your snakes every year? No. And do you worm your rodent production every year? Yes. And you do the ivermectin in the water? That or... um, What's it called? Quest? What is Quest? So worms are, are sensitive to different ones differently. So you'll need to do like a worming regime that changes because, you know, some things are sensitive to ivermectin and some things are sensitive to panicure and whatever. And since the toxic dose of ivermectin is actually pretty close to the correct dose of ivermectin, you don't necessarily want to willy nilly use it on snakes unless you have right. a problem. Right. But the, the rats are sort of like, if I prophylactically treat everyone's water with wormer, and then like that whole colony gets to take a break from feeding snakes, if I overdose someone slightly, like sometimes pregnant does will, will go down. Oh, well, sorry. I don't know how to be cool. Like you need like a, a way to do a massive number of animals at one time. Right. Um, worms, everybody. Yikes. Guess what Jenna's doing this weekend? <laughs> but you can't have these worms because this particular No, kind I know. Of I just, I haven't treated my, uh, my rodent uh, population this year. And so now I'm like, I, I'm going to go do that because that's right. gross. Because now I need to be able to sleep at night. The Tegooth problem. Um, They're so cute. Who hates Tegus? Georgia hates tegus. Why? Why would you hate a tegu? They're so cute and sweet and fun. Mm, I think the they problem eat with tegus eggs, dog food and they're hilarious. I think the problem with tegus is they they don't have the Burmese pythons excuse where like they will probably die because they will probably do just fine in Georgia. I I can't justify them being like they won't do just fine. They will. This is a picture of an outdoor cage in Alabama with black and white tegus. They had a small refugium that wasn't that far in the ground. And most of the adults came out of that fine. So the only way to convince a state that you will not fuck this up is if you have like a very good, I don't know, like rescue network or something where like if anybody has a, an animal that they can't keep anymore, instead of releasing it, when they bought the animal, there's a card that says, like, if you can't keep this, please don't release it. Here's this rescue in this city and this rescue in this city. And you can return it to me. You won't get a refund because it's five years later. But please don't release it. That's the only way. Because, like, yeah, black we need like, a, like the firefighter and the, and the baby, like, you can drop off a baby anytime. Yes. Kind of network. Like, please, because they're a reptile exactly. network of it's okay to leave your network on my front door. Right. So tegus are already have two breeding colonies in Georgia and they're sighted all over the place already and reasonable enough numbers that I don't have a good way to defend keeping up tegus in what what do they do to state. the environment are they like destroying anything or they are really good at eating eggs and so the gopher tortoise is the native oh. turtle it's fire dependent and since we don't allow fires anymore in the south uh, they're not doing that great and that is a bummer they would destroy a native species so like it's not really it's hard to defend something if we keep we continue to keep releasing them on accident or on purpose people and that is a that is a real problem in the community especially right. with pet keepers i don't think that breeders are just like oh this no. one's going outside today but i do think that pet people i mean you see it all the time it's really unfortunate Right. So I don't know how to defend it unless you were like, I'm going to come at you with a robust network of people that will make sure even the most rando pet keeper knows where to place their animal instead of placing it in the wild. Would the state of Georgia believe you? I don't know. So I, uh, all these papers will be in the show notes, but I think someone could have definitely argued to save berms because they're just being targeted unnecessarily. Nobody right. has Tibetan berms. Do you have a a fucking or a Nepalese berm. Do you have one in your pocket that is like more cold sensitive, more cold tolerant? No, 
Nobody does. We can't even import it if we could. All of our birds are dumb. They're fine. Pigus, though, um, hmm, you know? Yeah. Bummer. They're yeah. so cute. They do eat eggs, though. They, they think they're yummy. Yeah. The other thing that I thought was interesting it's down here is they were planning on banning a crayfish based on somebody's website <laughs> so they're obviously trolling through all of our pet keeper um, wow material looking for stuff we're doing to fuck us <laughs> over but that but this is their thought is if they can just prevent way early it's cheaper than dealing with it later so th- everyone's on the they're like let's do it on the green instead of the red that's so if, scary for us in all aspects of reptile keeping. <laughs> if they can yeah. start convincing people to ban early, they won't need evidentiary, evidentiary support of any effect that they're having on the environment. That's right. That's what they're doing now in Florida. They're going to be like, it doesn't matter because we are already fucked. We're going to cut off any other source of fuck. So Lisa boas is, are, are uh, a huge risk in a... Uh, is what? nominating Jessica to the U.S. Art Board. I don't know. I think we should try to um, connect with the shows that are in the States and the reptile rescues. Because if the reptile rescues could come and take in animals at shows, like if there's like a drop-off system. and Yeah, but I almost think it needs to be more intense they go than to that. A like, like, a, to... like a transport network. That, like if a, a, a reptile is in need... Someone will go pick it up. So you need like a robust system of like volunteers, drivers, a like intermediate space where they're housed and given veterinary care and or humane euthanasia. If they're like mean or old or, you know, they can't be placed successfully, that's fine. You know, it's better than them going in the wild and p- putting out more pentastomes. I don't know how you do that, though. We're yeah, so I like secretive. That, that rescues do try. Janet, we lost Jana. Everybody, say it again. Oh, hello. Yeah, try again. Hello. All right. Oh, oh brother. Can you hear me? Are we good now? No. Yes. No. No. Maybe. Maybe sign sign out and sign back in. Can you do that? Okay. Yep. All right. So what Janet's trying to say is like. A lot of these systems so- are sort of working in certain like um, metro areas where they're like, but we just need more of them and they need to be bigger so we can prove to um, municipalities and DNRs and state governments that we're not a bunch of fuck ups that allow our, a bunch of fuck ups that allow our animals out in the wild because we are, we have, you know, a, a mom and pop pet store selling tegus on the regular to people who aren't well prepared. I think a good breeder, don't you think this, Jana? A good breeder on average is teaching how to take care of a berm to their buyer directly, like their first buyer. I make it a, a point to educate people on how to have a ball python. So I hope that other people are doing that. But I bought a set of frogs um, at the show and didn't get any information. So, I mean, I do think that uh, people need to be re- taking responsibility of making sure that they're giving basic information and where more information can be found um, mm-hmm. if you are going to be selling these animals. And I do think um, that there needs to be some co- si- sort of system in place that we can prove that we have rescues and resources rather than people just dumping them into the, right. the wild populations. Um, I like, mean, that might right be right now. A... We've proven that we dump tegus actively in the wild in Georgia. Yeah, even recently, like we're like it's not fair that like Ty Parks was blamed for the tegus around his house. Like he didn't even have tegus, right? Right. So that was quite dumb. Let's be clear. Ty wasn't Ty Parks. Well, fault. and then if you watch any of his stuff, you know when things were banned he was actively trying to home them in other states rather than euthanize them. He wasn't Mm -hmm. dumping them outside. He was trying to responsibly move them to a legal area. He wasn't, you know, like a lot of people would just be like, oh, I can't have them. Let's euthanize them all. Like he was actively trying to get those animals 
into places that were safe for them. And so why would he have, why would he be setting tegus free in his backyard? Like who, he wouldn't be doing that. Him especially, right. like if you just the know him at Florida all. Does, has a clear, to clear to me, campaign of, I don't know, hate or something against yeah. him in particular. Like, that is if so you like... watched his interviews, like he was literally in tears about the ones because they wouldn't give him one more week to get them shipped out. He was literally in tears because they took his animals and euthanized them. Like, yeah, that's not a guy that's just checking him out the back door. No, no. Yeah, it's silly. It's just really it, sad. And and th even with the judgment that he had, they still, I don't know, it's real fucked. Fuck you, Florida. Eat yeah. a bag of dicks. Picking on he's he's a good guy yeah so i think if we could get us arc on board if we could get us arc to be i don't know regulating or setting up some kind of network of rescues um See, i don't think it'll ever be us arc it's not their mission it should be like but it why isn't it their mission if they're trying to cut us off at the because they don't like prevention why they wouldn't can't. us arc want to prove and have that information to show when they go up against these people legislatively like look at this infrastructure we've created like why couldn't they be there's the a lot of things i wish us arc would do but okay, i don't think they'll fine. ever add running like i think us arc should insist that part of the like fair use of an animal is to have it free from infectious disease and parasites just on their like this is the ethical treatment of an animal i asked for that they said no they don't think they should be involved in that and i think this is a clear situation where free from disease and parasites has directly impacted the the ability to keep the animal in the end maybe so they won't even do that they won't take so strong of a stand their stand is only everyone should keep everything as much as we possibly can but i just think people in the states it's hard because i don't have a fucking rescue do you so you I can't don't. blame anybody for allowing an area to like not have a rescue that's a, a real 501c3, by the way, not like a glorified flipper piece of shit. It's just, it's hard. So if, it almost should be like another organization, like a new non-for-profit forms out of the mist, whoosh, gets all that PJAC money, and is specifically about preventing unwanted yeah. escapes and, and, you know, people letting them go just to prevent legislative bans. I don't know. I don't know. I don't have all the answers, but I know that banning berms in Georgia for the reasons they did is stupid. That's my opinion. What's yours? <laughs> oh, she's blurred. <laughs> Dang it. Uh, we should be able to round up politicians and euthanize them. Yeah, but they're just doing what their constituents want. And in Georgia, they convinced their constituents to want the ban. More people were for it than against it. Does, does Jana know that she's blurred and asleep? Maybe. We'll take her away until then. Jana! Hold on. Will's Hell Heat says the DA is the number one reason we have invasive species, but does the government even acknowledge the thousands of animals DA compass were let loose in the wild? No, but like you, the government has super fun sites where they're barely accountable for poisoning people or it will always be our fault too, but the only way to fight any of it is just to be the bigger person with gonads and try as best as we can to be like we have the cleanest nose possible our snakes don't have this parasite we don't have any weird infectious diseases we have accountability for the pets that go out into the world and maybe aren't wanted anymore because we bring them back into a rescue and we try to rehome them successfully and we all spend money on keeping all of our all of our noses clean do we do that now i don't know i guess jan is uh, gone forever. So should I proceed? <laughs> uh. All right. Let's talk about 
the reptile show. Hey, look, she's back. Hi. I think I fixed it. Holy mackerel. I don't know what you were doing. All right. I think I finished it up. So let's just move on to the reptile show because I have to leave in a little bit. Okay. Marshall's back. Um, okay. The show was really weird, Jana. I just wanted you to know. And I'm going to tell you my show story. And maybe you'll think it was a complete waste of time or not. But. So. Are you frozen again? Oh, you're yeah. back. I, I think I'll have to just reset my router before we do podcasts in the future. I don't know what the heck's going on. No, it's okay. I mean, if you can hear me and talk, it's okay if you're frozen. Okay. Keep, keep okay. going. All right. So Alex needed to give candy out to everyone and hug them. Um, that was the number one event. Did you it, bathe him in sanitizer after? I just threw him in the trash. He was unfit to come home. <laughs> so it was, it, two it, was, show? it was a two day show and show me shows. I didn't know this, but not all locations, but, but this one has a daytime Saturday, a nighttime Saturday, and then a daytime Sunday. <laughs> I don't know. And I was like, does anyone ever come to the nighttime? Cause you were allowed to like, close up your thing and not bend and, and then everyone's like sometimes some there's some people i think we had like four people Ugh. in the nighttime show i don't i don't know anybody that was sold in anything at night that's gross i wouldn't want to do it <laughs> you're so dead after being at the show all day you just want to eat something and cry and then fall asleep so here's what's interesting though the the timing of the day part is shorter so it's like VIPs at nine, show opens at ten, but they're done at three thirty instead of five. So that means you oh. get like a solid couple of hours to go like chill in your hotel, and okay. then you could come back if you wanted to. I actually like that in a way because if you're gonna travel for the show, you're stuck in that city anyway. Yeah, being able to go eat makes makes a big difference, right? And so you can like check in on your animals one last time, and and mostly everyone's just chit chatting. And RN says it can be fun at times. But Marshall says it's terrible. <laughs> Marshall, terrible. Aaron could be fun. I could see it would be fun if you were like half drinking. And drink. Like <laughs> Marshall just said drink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, if it's like a big vendor hangout and everybody's been fed and they're passing around the booze, that sounds like a lot of fun. And then like customers can come in. Yeah. So I, I mean, like a vendor hour almost. Yes. But... It's almost like another VIP, but it, it isn't. I just thought it was actually very interesting because none of our shows do that. And I felt like more rested and happy at the end of the day having oh, okay. like had less a shorter beginning time a sooner break like a true break. Like I went back to my hotel and like watched TV and just like, did nothing. Yeah. yeah. And then like retry it again. I just don't know if anyone ever sells that much in that block of time or just mostly like an excuse to re- socialize again hi jared are you frozen again no nope. okay thank god <laughs> now I, I can't tell i'm just listening because this is you telling about your show so yeah i know yeah I'm, I'm, this is what it looks I like i was trying to see if your listening. eyebrows were wiggling or something and i couldn't tell okay so on saturday i sold three corn snakes and two boas wow wait three and two wow Ooh, you were raking it in on in the, after, table? in the after dark, I sold zero animals, and on Sunday I sold two boas. My total was sold five hundred and twenty dollars. Did you pay for your hotel and your table? I did pay for my hotel and table with okay. gas and some food. It was like four fifty. Oh, okay. So at least you uh, didn't come out a the grand negative. profit of seventy dollars. <laughs> But you went I home with people, less animals. So that's yeah, cool. it was fine. It, in some ways, like the door numbers, I was bothering the guy because I had nothing better to do. I was like, what's your door today? What's your door tonight? The door on Saturday was like 300 people. Oh. The door on Saturday night was like 10 people or something. And the door on Sunday was like 90 people. And I'm like, given the sheer not number of people. You did amazing. Yeah. I was like, Whoa. relatively speaking. <laughs> relatively speaking, because um, our shows get like 4,000 to 6,000 people, depending on wh what the location is. That's crazy. Balls and Strike loves the evening hours. I can definitely see how it works, given if this show is high traffic, 
right but day. 10 people isn't worth the vendor's time right but i was already like like my, my hotel was only like five minutes away i'm like what else am i gonna do so right like, right right and talked about ball python morphs on our phone or something but the the for the record the traffic in the evening is always sparse which i believe but I guess it, it doesn't matter. If it could you're... be fine. Like I said, if everybody's gone and eat, so we're all feeling less like we want to kill each other. And and if you're making it like a vendor hangout and it's like real cash and the 10 to 50 people that come get to enjoy that casual environment because they're mm -hmm. coming off of work or whatever, that's cool. And I would totally be down for that. Um, but if I had to just like stand at my booth for another one. And like they also don't hours, force you to do it. Like you can choose as a vendor not to do it. I, I think when you don't show up to opportunities like that, it, it looks bad for your business. So like, I don't feel like it's a choice. I feel like you 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 get to do that. You know what I mean? Like it's a choice, but it's not really a choice because you're there for your business. So. Oh, Balls and Strike says he or she doesn't love the evening hours saying I've sold snakes. And then there are people who love the evening hours. Balls and Strikes. I mean pronouns please <laughs> i don't know we don't have to force it we'll get into if it eventually it's fine right. yeah i just thought it was an interesting concept like on paper when i first got there at first i was like i heard about it because i've obviously signed up for the tables and i'm like we never do that i've never been to a show that does that it's an interesting idea conceptually um it's fine right it's fine it's, fine. it's, fine. it's all fine oh he's an old man self-identified an old man <laughs> Okay, well, you've got a hot, like, pinup girl. So, I mean, it could be an old man or it could be a hot pinup girl. So, I mean. Or anything in between, sure. Could be, a, could be a bearded dragon that's uh, evolved the thumbs. We don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Marshall says, uh, we need to show up to support the show. Yeah. I, I, like I said, yeah. I don't feel like those things are uh, optional. In my business well, brain, that's not an option to me. Like, you don't. Like my kid, like if she gets sick of selling stuffies and she's like, can I just close my half of the store? I'm like, no, you're here for the show and you will be open for the show. You do not shut down. Like you just don't do that. In my opinion, if you make a commitment to be there as a business, you're there as a business and you do the whole length of the show. Like people who sell out and then just leave, like I get it. Like you've done what you needed to do, but I just think like there's no reason why you can't be there and being handed out cards and making contacts. And I just, for me, it, it seems unprofessional. Um, I think you're overthinking the, the show because 50% of the vendors did not show to begin with. Um, well, that's for me, that's not an option. Like you just, you show up. I mean, if you like, if your entire collection comes down with mites or whatever, don't bring your animals, but you bring your business. You know what I mean? Like, I just, that's, that's how I am. I don't think everyone has to be that way. That's just how I look at it. Uh, Have we had drama hour yet? Do you mean No, news? there's no drama. We're cool people. Or do you mean like the drama that's happening in the industry? Be more clear, please. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's literally like, that's how I feel. I'm not like writing a list of, oh, I'm never going to buy from these people because they didn't show up or I'm never going to buy from these people because they left early. I just mean, as my business and how I want to present my business, that's how I look at it, is that oh, you're there and you do it. I really do not care. I was not like, I condemn this person for not yeah, no. coming. I just mean, that's not They were coming me. both days. They just chose, because it's actually like right at dinner time. It's like six to eight. So if you want to go home to your house and have dinner with your family, you just have to make other arrangements. So I was like, no big deal. But I just thought it was an interesting concept. Was uh, it like 50-50 on who came back or was it? Pretty... Most people were there because they were they had driven into the event and had a hotel. So they had literally no reason <laughs> to go home not to home. come back that night. So most people did come back. Oh, One, they are wanting the industry drum. <laughs> uh oh. Uh, do you want our thoughts? We'll do that news, uh, some sort of sanitized version. Maybe. <laughs> you do you, sister. I'm not. Gonna... I already talked about it at the end of the last episode. And my feelings are the same, pretty much. That everyone should be respectful as best they can. Now, I did. A, they don't give lanyards to vineyards. They said they just memorize who's a vendor. And I was like, okay. Spokane doesn't either, and neither does um, the Northwest Reptile Show. The other one, not Pack Northwest. Right, I like I feel, the lanyards. 
Yeah, I feel like I went because a lot of times people walk up to your table and you're like, I can't remember if that's a vendor or not. Like, do I need that's to talk helpful. to them like a vendor or do I need to talk to them like a customer? Well, and then do they vendors do they have like their t shirts? Some of the time. Whoa. A lot of time, yeah. no. So like they're just like a dude or a dudette. So it's it just depends. This is a very casual show. Your person. Uh, see, I, I feel like if it's a brand new show, that's cool. But this is like a big circuit of shows, isn't it? It is, but this is a... It's a small show. show is very small sometimes. Right. But can't they like issue a one-time lanyard for new people and you bring your Or just own? like a little like, clip or something. It's just something expensive. little clips. Okay. Like, it's just something to identify you as a person you're, that's supposed to be there. Right. Of, he did. He was not. My show coordinator was nice because it's not the same guy. Because obviously Mickey has a large network. Right, right. Every show probably has their own. Yeah, it's a new guy that opens it up and, and runs it. Not new, but like two. And they run the, the show me table. Right. And that's. He was totally nice. I, guess that, I just it, didn't know how they ran their business. Yeah, I but I don't think that's unreasonable because if it's a small show and you want to keep costs down for vendors too, like they don't want to have to pay for those every single time. Um, our shows are mm -hmm. still doing really well. So it still makes sense to give out vendor passes every show. Um, but it should be an option that you get like a vendor tag and you can get your own lanyard or whatever. Like I, I do think that it's important to have vendors marked, especially for other vendors and also for, customers i don't know i just think it's really important and i feel like pretty naked at the shows that don't do it so sometimes i'll like bring my own lanyard and put the little clip on it or whatever but yeah it was, it was fine but just different it would be nice because like my husband came in and i'm like how are they gonna know he's my husband and he just walked in <laughs> i guess he just said like i well i'm over there but they just believed him and that was fine Anybody that comes and is in my booth has my t-shirt on. Right. He had my t-shirt on too, but what does that, oh, that doesn't okay. mean anything. Right. Like, no, I mean, I, for I sure. I didn't assign him as a badge holder. All right. And then I was bothering the guy some more. He said Mickey basically took a major loss this weekend or that weekend. Like oh, most that shows were doing poorly. I think Idaho Boise did okay because something happened and there was a lot of foot traffic. So is there's a, a show me show in Boise. Yeah, he's all over the place actually. God bless. Oh, I, I I would love to. I need to hit up Boise. I, I will look into that. Maybe add it to my circuit. And at Venom Fest, did you hear about this? I did. It was. It actually finally made the news. Look at this deadly cobra. <laughs> That's a ball python, a pewter ball python. But nice try, news people. <laughs> Uh, it, it, first it was, the rumor was that it had escaped, but then it's, it was just missing from its resale deli. Like somebody stole it and stuffed a cobra down their pants, like a dumbass. And then I was say, those things, they like double tape them in red and they're like really secured because people don't want the venom fest to get shut down. So the vendors are very careful and there are a lot of rules that they abide by in order to have those kind of shows. Like I've seen YouTube videos for venom fests and like I said, they're very careful. <laughs> yeah, lots of rules, but still one was stolen because it was unaccounted for. They had to call in people to like look to double check Gosh. and then they shut the show down anyway. So that was like a loss. And then everyone got mad and then it leaked to the public. And I, mean, I think Mickey, he hasn't made an official position. But he's like considering not doing it anymore. Ever. And then Marshall says he's doing a show me show next week and they dropped it down from two days to one. Um, did they do that like recently, like before, right before the, like, was it two days recently? Cause they were talking about like next year's Oklahoma shows would be one day or did they just cut you down today? Like it would have been better if I didn't have to have a hotel and I could have just had the Saturday so sales. Saturday. That's what I do with the one day Portland ones. And I get to keep a lot more of the money rather than spending two nights at a hotel. Yeah. Cause you have to come in the night before. Yeah. And so it's two nights in a hotel, not one. And it, that's money out of everyone's pocket. But mm -hmm. um, most of the vendors, I have a list of vendors. I have nothing to do. So I made it. 
10 ball python breeders, two crested greco breeders, a hedgehog breeder. Oh, I love the hedgehog. A decor only vendor, maybe some like cages, but decor. A bearded dragon vendor, a like mixed ball python retic vendor, and a pecan brittle vendor. <laughs> and me. And I intentionally brought just bows and corn snakes because I sensed. <laughs> you sensed the uh, <laughs> enormity of the ball python people? Yeah. Um, although, here's the uh, irony here is most people looked at my boas and were like, these are weird ball pythons. They were so like... <laughs> they just didn't even ball. know what they were looking at. They, they had no assumed. idea another animal could exist that was sort of shaped generally like, sort I of I mean, that's good body. for you in the future, right? <laughs> because you have a variety. What are they going to do when you bring a hog nose? Was there oh, any, was there anybody that had hog noses or other kinds of colubrids? So hog noses would require a state keeper permit. Oh, I forgot. So you yeah. would have to like know that they already have one, right? For okay. them to acquire one. I forgot from you. that there were funny hog nose laws over there. Um, but there was very little anything else. There was I saw like a tiny sprinkle of king snakes on the retic ball table. The tiniest sprinkle of just like a couple king snakes. And I think one person had like a Kenyan Sambo or two. But it was, but everyone was like nice because that's got to count for something, right? It does count. All yeah. the vendors, you know, I there like was a the vendor I, I did not like, and he had a lot of boas, but he was like, I don't know how to be nice to him. Hopefully he watches this. He said he was leaving the next day to drive to another show somewhere else. And he was like, I'll buy all these like cheap boas on your table to flip tomorrow. And I was like, nope. <laughs> I was like, you don't know anything about these boas. Why would you go flip them tomorrow? And he's like. Oh, a lot of people do that at the shows. Like there's a whole sale. Like, Fuck you. There is. that. That's normal and normal. Etiquette. I don't care. It doesn't, happen at, it doesn't happen at our shows. but it does I could be at full of arena. And he doesn't know that. <laughs> but you're not. So if you wanted to sell I those snakes. I don't care. His can. bows okay. are full of arena then. And okay. then I ended up looking him up on Facebook. And he just finds stuff on Craigslist. And relists it. And uses the picture from the original Craigslist ad. As his ad to sell it. So he doesn't breed snakes at all. I mean maybe he does. But I can't tell based on all the pictures he's taken from other people. Of all different kinds of species. And I was just like you're stressing me out. Don't ever be near me. Don't ever talk to me. He he was he's like a nice guy, but I'm like that is no, not yeah. the way I to mean, run a the business. Gross Craigslist at no, but there are the nice ball vendors. python couple next to me, which I forgot their freaking business name. Buy ten of those before you buy the technically rarer boa from the right. boa guy because he doesn't have accountability for his stock. Yeah, I mean, there's one thing to be like, I'm gonna buy ten yellow bellies from my friend because i know their collection and i feel confident putting my name on it and mixing it in with my stock and selling it at the show or whatever that's different than rando number five asking rando number three who just bought 20 snakes from all randos to take it to the next show you are not accountable for anything and you can't honor any guarantee because you have no idea i agree um like i have put animals on my table that I didn't breed but I always include the breeder's information and tell them to contact that breeder if you're just flipping in you're just like oh yeah everything's good you know like that's I feel like that's a little unethical um we have a bunch of stuff happening in the comments do you want to touch yeah on I don't know I just got mad about that guy <laughs> I see that Paul Alexander said do you feel that genetic testing will eventually remove the terminology of post this or post that no um I actually think that eventually moving forward, that lower end animals that are POS um, things, that they may just remove those. No, please don't. Don't even recommend that. You I'm not recommending still... it. I'm seeing that, that this is what I think will happen. I think that the yeah, lower end not... things will lose that on their... God, no. That'd be terrible. I, but you, think... I mean, you've even advocated for selling males without listing their heads so that you don't crash your own market so it's if you know you're placing it at a pet home but if you're selling something like a to some to anyone on morph market you should put all the information in my opinion i 
feel that way for all animals, but I'm just saying if it starts trending that way, that the, you know, under 400 or whatever market is considered a pet market. So it may start becoming the I mean, trend. Kind of. I bought stuff. Uh, listen, listen. She's all worked up, people. I'm so mad about it. I don't want albino in my Desert Goes project. <laughs> I actually don't care what else everyone, anyone else does. <laughs> You do don't sell me your paws at albinos without labeling them. Or paws caramel. What a disaster. Nobody wants that at all. Please don't. Okay, Please. so we've got some test, uh, genetic testing questions that okay. I have feelings on. Okay. Um, genetic testing. Has anybody received the results? I have heard of nobody. Um, they said in their interview on Chris Eaton's that their turnaround time would be like a week. And it mm -hmm. has been much longer than a week. Mm -hmm. They have not returned people's things. Mm -hmm. I don't think they were ready to launch. I don't think they had a system in place. I don't think they understood how much quantity they were tell? going to Okay. I don't know. Mm -mm. I'm, I'm not like hating trouble. on them or like I'm screaming gonna get in at trouble. Them. But it's fine, Jana, is what I'm telling you. Wink, wink. As in she's been getting those phone calls. We've been talking about everybody like she's in the loop. It's fine. It's in the best of hands. It won't be like six months from now. There's just, it's fine. You know what I mean? Well, like, so that you're saying is they are overwhelmed and they're going to be seeking help and it's going to get better. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. We can't say I more don't, than that. I don't know how to, it's fine. It's in the best hands. The bestest hands. Her favorite hands. Mm-hmm. You know, um, yeah, I, but I also think that they shouldn't have made those promises. And if they weren't ready, right, they, they shouldn't, shouldn't have given any timelines. <laughs> right. I thought when they said seven days that that was ridiculous anyway, but you should. I under, don't think it's ridiculous because I under promise in 24 hours. I know, I'm, but I'm saying you should under promise and right. over deliver. And they way over promised and they haven't delivered anybody's stuff. Like if you don't have a system in place to run the tests that you're going to be running, why are you selling the tests and accepting samples? Like how are they even keeping millions of samples? Like hopefully they have a good system for that. Like mm -hmm. hopefully y'all are getting your confirmations and I don't know. I, mm -hmm. I am not using it until they work the kinks out better. I won't speculate because I'm going to feel my hand, but I think it's fine and we'll be fine. And the reason why it didn't like start, happening is a, a reason that makes sense and it's still fine uh, uh, well, the strikes I, I don't think that's why she's worked up she's worked up about people i worked about that guy trying to buy my snakes <laughs> and i'm like craigslist flippers are like her boogeyman especially she's in boas yeah boas. it just gets all of her feelings about um disease spreading right well first my husband stuff. was talking to him i thought he was normal and he was like uh so so i'm trying to sell some adult boas because i have like two-year-old females that are gonna need to grow up and there's such a thing as like not an infinite number of adult female boas because they take right. up a lot of space so but i want to like place them like locally because they don't like they're big you, you know like whatever yeah so so there's some things that are kind of for sale but not publicly correct so he, Chris was telling them that, and he's like, well, I'm going to buy all of your adult females. And I'm like, you don't care about morph or price? Nope. And that's a <laughs> fucking trigger. Red I was triggered. Is, is it Woo working your project? And he's like, no. And then I'm like, do you want them at wholesale prices? Because this, I just saying, it's fucking five times negative for arena virus. It is not a wholesale price. It is the, the, the right. like, pretty good snake price. This is like a proven breeder boa. Yeah. That yeah. never gets sold. And it's guaranteed to be a arena virus negative. And he's like, I'll just take like market price. And I'm like, Craigslist market price is probably not the price that I think they are either. So then I was just like grossed out. And then he, later on, he came and asked to buy my my babies to resell them in Arkansas or some shit. The moral of this story is if you are in and around Oklahoma and you would like <laughs> to start a boa breeding project in a correct way, contact Jessica. If or you're just Texas. looking to flip and be creepy, do not con contact Jessica ever for anything. I've never wanted to curb stomp someone faster. The turnaround <laughs> was instant. Because it was like, hi, yeah. And then you're like, because that is so like antithetical to everything I believe in about like caring about animals. Um, right. Now so that's I why I'm see like, what... the ball python breeders next to me are way better, even though they're like obviously selling something dumb, air quotes. They're buying animals, breeding them. 
raising up babies, selling babies that are well-adjusted. Better. Yeah. Better. Um, Balls and Strikes also said that he felt like the local show me shows were not well advertised. Did you feel like they were? No, I don't think I saw like a Facebook run up. And also I looked for his, his like infographic for mine and I could never find it to that's, share that's to my that you can't thing. even copy their infographic to put on your page that you're going to be there right and, like I, and in I was our area, told later it existed and i was like i swear to god i looked for it because i just want like to put it in my stories or whatever yeah no yeah. i feel like at least in our area where's that comment at? it's up i because he said he asked if he offended us so i was trying to find where he would oh, could have no. been offensive and i was like i am I didn't offend see anything myself offensive. yes each day well, I know that because I know you, but the mm-hmm. audience did not know that. I just think that that is the job of the the show promoter. Like that's their whole reason that you're paying them is that they're going to advertise and they're going to create a space for it. And they're going to bring people through the door. Like that's that's their job. Mm-hmm. And that's it's also like- weird that you could pay when you got there in cash, which I guess is like a Southern show thing. That's interesting. Like like you could sign up, have a table. And then if you showed up, you got the table you signed up for. But if you didn't show up, no big. Interesting. We'll just squish that table in. Our, ours, ha- you have to pay for it in advance. And they like close close mm-hmm. the show for vendors be- way before the show start. Like, I want to say like a month before the show, they they say, oh, we're fill- filled up on vendors. Right. Show Me Snakes, says RN, has expanded very fast and the expansion of locations is outpacing the back end administration side of the building, the business. And I had a very negative vendor experience at the inaugural St. Paul, Minnesota. That sucks. Sorry about that. I can definitely see how like people could fall through the cracks in weird ways. And I don't, I don't know. Balls and Strikes says uh, Augusta, Georgia, Greenville, South Carolina, poor turnouts, and they're not advertised here at all. What else did we miss? Reese came in. What's up, Reese? God, but Repticon... I don't know what the other show me shows look like, but everyone there, except for Scary Guy, was pretty clean. Clean nose. Like it was, you know, a ball python breeder with captive bred ball pythons. A crested gecko breeder with captive bred crested geckos. So that was a very clean experience. Like, I didn't feel mites on me <laughs> while I was Which there. Which some of our shows you definitely feel like, so, like, like you need to strip is... in your car and, and then run to your house naked before you shower. <laughs> the other problem is there was no like one big like headline vendor. Like you're like Josh's Frogs is being here and he's and they're a sponsor of the show. You know what I mean? There wasn't yeah. even one of those. So why would anybody think to want to go? Yeah, we always have sponsor vendors. We have VIP. Like we've been a little bit spoiled, I think. Our, our, I feel like ours is a pretty good. What did he think that what I was upset about? I don't know. He never said. Um, right. But I was scrolling up trying to find anything that might have been offensive. I, I didn't see anything. I was like, well, what did you Listen, like? Listen, balls and strikes. I'm a hysterical woman. <laughs> no, Could be not. on my period at any time, <laughs> oh, and you gosh. wouldn't know. That's so, true. like, it's all weird. We're uh pushing the button on nuclear war today guys (laughs) uh i thought it was because like like i did good even though i did there wasn't very many vendors i was like i guess this is a wash right it's fine you know my neighbors were nice they didn't have mites probably probably i don't even know forward motion reptiles did you set up a handle function for your youtube channel i don't know what that is jessica hmm I don't know what you're talking about, Jen. Mm, yeah, I don't know what that means. So, Balls and Strike says, a few Repticons have some shady breeders with dirty vendors, and everything we take is treated before and after the show. That's good. I just wish, like, Repticon had the balls to kick him out. Like, who cares? Especially, like, like, don't they have a waiting list? Repticons? I don't think so. Maybe for the gutter people to get in. The waiting list is for, like, gutter people. Hi, Troy. I try Hi, to Troy. remember people's Jessica names. Jessica actually is phenomenal at names. I suck at names. So well, I will remember your business name. And that's pretty much as far as I get with most people. <laughs> and this is like a meta question, but 
when people are shouted out on the podcast or would you rather me remember your given name and say it because I remember it or your business name because then your business name is like permanently etched on like the audio version like which one's better Jana please explain to me I've thought about it like three times in like so I've been asking around because I am going to be doing a lot of promoting and mm-hmm. part of promoting they like you have to show up to a bunch of the Chris Eaton lives and zooms and stuff and I normally show up as myself as Jenna King mm-hmm. um and I was like do I need to be showing up with ASM Royal Tales and my logo and I got different answers like some people are like people should know who you are and other people were like put your brand on everything so I, there isn't a right answer and it's been really frustrating because more wizard says say my, my name, name say my name no one is around yeah, yeah both is good because then you you the person recognizes that you're someone but yeah business name seems to be have more utility long term well if you noticed i uh, switched my little yeah, I, I see. label to have both because like i said i couldn't come up with the correct answer so uh maybe that's what i will i'll be doing for a while is both um also if you search my name on instagram you can find asm royal tales because it's under my business name but I, I don't know i think um for shout outs and stuff probably their business name because their people aren't seeing their name in the comments if they're listening to audio, mm-hmm. so they're not seeing their business name. So right. I, don't, I don't know. I don't know what to do. These are the things I ha- I'm forced to think about at 2 a.m. or whatever. God save me. All right, that was it. I thought it was largely fine. Uh, some people thought my course takes were too expensive at $60. So fuck you guys. I literally hate you. Eat a bag of dicks. <laughs> I did roll out creature cards for the, the first time. Do you know what those are? Are those like the little like postcards that talk about the species? So they're like tiny little care sheets on like a business card. Size. Yeah. No, I've seen them. Yeah. So I bought ball python and corn snake. I didn't have one for boas, but it, well, the ball python one's pretty close for boas. It's just the adult size is wrong. So I just brought them. And a lot of some people appreciated it. Some people didn't appreciate it. And some kids just stole them, but they did cost money. So I'm like, maybe I shouldn't have it just like out. No, just you like should have them when you sell the them. Right. And they go with your business card on the, the cup or the bag or whatever that you're putting right. your animals into. So um, but those I've, were nice to have finally. Cause I was like, it's really not that hard. If it can fit on the size of a business card, I swear to God. I would love to this. do like little like pamphlets. I just have never managed to assemble one and print it and take it with me but i think that it's a great idea in general yeah i would love lots of things but like i've been saying i was going to do it a long time and i'm like fuck it i'm just going to buy it because they've already done it and their information is fine enough yeah and there's no reason to stop maybe you could link them below yeah it'll be in the show notes I, i i just wish they had more species to me like why don't well if we start pimping their name around maybe they'll right and they'll give you custom ones so they'll use their template and put your logo on it oh that's really cool if you want yeah or your favorite version of a corn snake i didn't pay for that because it's like a little more expensive but if they do custom ones i bet you they would do a boa one and if all they had to change was like the size and put boa instead of ball python Right, probably, if I just asked. Yeah. I just wanted to try them out, see if like a normal human could read that and understand it in a short amount of time. And I think right. most of them did. I just like, nobody gets that corn snakes are not a throwaway pet here, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> and so they're like, why aren't they $20? I'm like, because these are all like interesting Living, corn snakes breathing with, with like breeding potential. And they have very specific parents that were selected for very specific qualities. And you should buy them because you want something that doesn't going to die or whatever. Uh, they very few people could be convinced that that was true. That blows. That was it. It was fine. I would do a show me show again. I just don't know like which locations are good. So next year, are you going to do the show me show, or are you going to do that other one that was referred to you? I can't remember what it was. So the reptile nation is tomorrow, so I'm not going. <laughs> clearly. I would probably do Reptile Nation again or next year, right? Okay. Uh, but that's just like a once a year thing. And then I'm I'm like, there's a show in Tulsa, 
November 26th or something, which is like the weekend after Thanksgiving, right? Mm -hmm. I might do that one. But it's a show me show. So like everybody write in. Is that the dumbest idea ever? Because it's four hours away. It's two hours away. Yeah, and... write in. Have you ever been to the Tulsa show? Is it good or not good? And see, then... that's the other thing is that like all of our shows have like Facebook groups. And so you can ask other vendors like how they how they did or how they've done in the yeah, past. Yeah, this has a Facebook group too. But I think everybody's like, not they're active. all bad. So they're not sure what to do. And so like they're talking about reducing days and reducing show, which is the correct answer. But yeah, I don't know about to do like the next show. And then there's a Herb show in january in oklahoma city so it'd be closer again but that one is the one that's full yeah that's the one you have to be on the waiting list right right but maybe the people have have uh um pulled out i would like to know if <laughs> just always pull message out them. do i just show up and they'll give me a table who knows <laughs> What's the uh, etiquette here? I Bruckner feel like some people have like shown up and been like, oh, I thought I had a table. And they yeah, like let them. I think that's a thing in the it South. It is a thing. I've heard about it. Like right. people that literally like, oh, I couldn't get on the waiting list. So I just showed up and looked cute and they let me in. Super Snake Syndicate. That's a great name. It is. What's Marshall that? says the Reptile Nation show in Colorado is the best show in Colorado. Yeah, I, I was given high praise to it after I had signed after, up for the wrong show. After she was already packing up for this show and a show every weekend, that's too much. <laughs> too too right. much. I, I and I probably could have tried to sneak down there, but I was just like I would be so backed up on like feeding intervals because like everything sort of slides. And then you're like four hundred snakes come due on like are now due on the same day. So like you have to like respace them out again. Right. So there's like a cascade effect of dumb crap. Yeah, I do like it when they pull out. Just saying. Oh, I have. You can't always get pregnant around here. <laughs> <laughs> Whew, there are multiple locations for those things to. <clears throat> Sorry, RNG reptiles. Yeah, you should change Reese to RNG reptiles so I can do your brand each time, and so I don't forget. I'll try to remember. Well, and then it's funny because I people put their names and I'm like, I don't know who that is. And then they'll say their business and I'm like, oh, I know exactly who you are. Right. <laughs> so I guess maybe the answer is business name, not name, because I can identify people's businesses. Then, mm -hmm. And I, a lot of the time you'll say a name and I'll be like, what's their business name? And you'll say, it and I'm like, oh, okay. And then well, we can finish our conversation. But I'm just one human and I've never been great at names. So pick that mm -hmm. what you will also another little just like psa for those of you who are listening and are continuing to friend me on facebook i'm not gonna friend you i'm sorry mm. i love you it has nothing to do with you my facebook is private and now that i'm single, she hates you actually she told me now that i'm privately single, apparently the cute thing to do is friend me and then creep my messages how many dick pics have you gotten that were unsolicited please tell me this is real talk time I've actually gotten no unsolicited what? dick pics. What? But I mean, it'd be really fun to be like, oh, all the dick pics. I get all the dick pics. Although I think people know that that's not, not okay. But I do. Uh, I'm so surprised. Get like so many randos that friend me. And before when I was like accepting friends or whatever, or that my profile was public or they'd message me and they'd be like, oh, you're so hot, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I don't know who you are. And they would just like be hitting on me. And mm -hmm. my sister's been single for a long time. And so I was chatting with her about a couple of like really weird, gross experiences that I had. And she was like, yeah, that's totally normal. And I was like, it wasn't normal 15 years ago. <laughs> so I like I had somebody in the summertime deliver my ARS rack so it was like the freight company mm -hmm. and then just like randomly like two months later the guy like slides into my dms and is like you so hot you so pretty like let's hook up Ugh. and and I'm like you know where right. I live my public or my profile is public so now you know I have kids like it just really freaked me out and I was like dude if you message me again I'm gonna call your shipping company and get your ass fired because mm -hmm. that's creepy you don't message someone and be like I know where you live I know all this shit about your family and let's hook up like I know you're flag, single dude. now and there's no man yeah I like I literally you. like did not flirt with him boobs were not out like literally was just like basic level courteous to this person delivering my rack like 
I may have made eye contact, which apparently you're not supposed to do. Mm -mm. And it's like, I just never had this problem before. Like, I don't feel like I hit yeah, on I told you, I, I think I told you then, I'll tell you here publicly, you need to perfect the resting bitch face. So Jessica's no man, give me lessons. no yes. man can ever assume that you would dare touch his penis. I might know, just like fun. start wearing my wedding ring again, because <laughs> I don't know, like literally now I'm just like all the weirdos. So I do not accept friend requests. I'm sorry, but you can contact me on Instagram. That's cool. You can follow me on Instagram, but my Facebook page is a private personal page. And most of my, I have like under 200 friends, maybe like 150. And most of them are people I know in real life who know who my kids are. And so like, if I post things like their school fundraisers and things like that, everything is now super private. So unfortunately that's how I have to feel like I have to be because of, creepy people even if you guys aren't creepy so if i don't accept your friend request it's not personal it's just the blanket policy now okay wait Let's... wait wait you didn't read that well i just been putting stuff up while you're talking because oh okay um, well i missed it there was a lot of but i don't know okay uh, there's so... just a lot of chatter happening yeah about just highlighting stuff uh, Cohen is vending his first show in the New England. There's some like crusty old bags of shit up there, so <laughs> be careful. <laughs> yeah, definitely prophylactically uh, use mite spray, please. Oh, we need to definitely do a episode in the future talking about. Yeah, I just need frontline like... <sighs> frontline alternatives because the gold is depleting. Right. Well, I. The obvious answer is to use the, the concentrated stuff and dilute it down, but I would have to, like, know someone or do it personally is use the the new diluted homemade product and see if it kills snakes first. Because uh, there would be no, like, way to give advice without verifying it. Right? Right. Right. So if you want to kill some snakes for me, that'd be uh, great. Yeah, message me after. We'll work something out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, another random piece of news. One of my my niece got a snake at a show in South Carolina at the same weekend I was vending and Rude. sold a spider. And then she got a, Chris got a message like, should I get this spider or this bell? And Chris was like, get the bell. Yeah. <laughs> And then they're like, well, we got the spider. Like, it had already happened in between our show. Okay. And, and Chris is like, give it back. <laughs> and then they just went home. So she did not know it had any sort of neurological condition linked to the morph. And took it home anyway. And put it in a exoterra. The heat mat set to like 100 cool and aspen you and are like rocking the ant there <laughs> you're gonna educate i was just like, like they were thinking about getting a snake for me i'm just like tell me whenever you want one and give me the cost of shipping and i will send you anything you yeah. want i just i just uh, i don't care like who cares but they like you know they can't ask they just to go do but they got like the worst in my opinion show experience like got sold a spider what didn't know how to take care of it still and uh, it, when i saw it on this live stream it was like trying to crawl its way out of the you know the, the like foam backer it was trying to like escape as soon as possible because it was it was too hot i was right, like right it's like you guys Jesus are frying Christ, me <laughs> go get a thermostat leave that fucker alone for the next the rest of the time you have it so it can be happy and chill and hopefully it's it's a low wobble spider and it can be happy um, yeah, I don't sell spiders to people unless I've talked to them about the like very thing. explicitly, right? Fuck. Because people who are just looking for a pet and they take home a spider and then they're doing some research because they're like, "Look at my cool pet!" or they're in like a ball python group finally and they post it and everybody's like, "Oh my gosh, you bought a spider!" and they get like shit on. And so I need them to be emotionally prepared for that because otherwise it feels like they got like hoodwinked, and I don't want my name associated with people getting hoodwinked about a spider. So. Mm -hmm frustrating yeah everybody was talking about fipper now and that's what i was talking about the problem is like there's a carrier either oil or alcohol that is in the front line that is right. inert so you need to pick the right one that does not hurt the snake and is not an allergen to the snake 
to dilute the active ingredient fipronil too. And I can obviously like blow by blow the frontline label, but it doesn't tell you the carrier. It just says like inert material. And and right. So unlike whatever I, I have a, a a couple of uh het freezer mail that that will just you're frozen again, Jana. My God, what a hot mess. Yeah, Bafu is yeah. So like that's still true. The bulk fipronil is still available. Give it a go on after the show. All right. Are you still frozen? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, we'll wait for Jana to come back. Balls and Shrek sold a couple spiders to the show here in South Carolina last weekend, and we always educate about the wobble. Good. We'll just like tell them. Please, just just tell them. Just be like. This is what it is. It can be a, a animal with a, a nice life, but it needs to be treated in a way that all of its needs are met, and it doesn't have a lot of extra excitement stimuli. Am I back? Jen, are you back? Oh lord, you're still frozen. Let me remove you, and then I'll add you back in. Nope. All right, we're gonna move on without Jana. Sorry, Jana. <laughs> uh, news, new news for all the corn snake people. This was from two weeks ago, actually. Uh, MBK reptiles posted on the morph community that they hatched what they thought was a new morph. It looks like this. In some ways, it looks sort of Motley-esque. But it has a black belly. We all know Motleys have a... Motleys have a clear belly. But testers can have a clear belly, a striped belly, a all-black belly. And so he thought that this was something new. But to me, this looks like one of those weird, really aberrant tesseras. Are you back officially now? No. And up here, he's like, I've never seen a belly that was black before. And I'm like, don't you have tesseras? They all have black bellies. So I asked what the pairing was. And he never responded. So I don't know if Tesser was in the pairing or not. But to me, it doesn't look like anything particularly. It looks like a weird Tessera for the time being. I'm going to remove you again, Jana, if you're listening. Uh... Let me send her a, a new invite. Maybe that'll help. We're back. Oh no, the kids. So I have to leave at 2.30. So we still have time, Jamie. The other thing, which was the biggest tease. Well, let's do the monsoon since we're right there. The Mr. Rose announced the pastel yellow belly monsoon. Does anybody like this? You all, 2.30 Central Standard Time. I'm in Oklahoma. Uh, I like this a lot, actually. Does that make me a bad person? I don't know. Like It's pretty bright, but like the fuzz is uh, really high because of the yellow belly. <sighs> I, I still think like the straight Mojave monsoon is my favorite, but they're getting more interesting now. So does that make people want to get into it more? I think it does. Like based on all this stuff over here, the Inchi monsoon looks different enough. And then the number one dictees of the Instagram was <laughs> this... Paul Alexander doesn't care for my suit. It's it's going to be like an acquired taste. My problem is like, why is it so hard to breed? If there's all these hats, they're just, we should have more by now. So is there something, some other deleterious alleles in the line? 
JD Constriction made this real. Which is just the stormtrooper on something. <laughs> it's been so long. And she was a little small for her side because she went to a lot of shows. And it looks like he's trying to announce that she's on eggs. But the reel never actually shows what's under her coils. Although she does look like she could have been coiled on eggs or slugs. So this is the dick tease of the week. Uh, slow clap. I think that's it. I can't believe we lo completely lost Jana, though. Let me see if I can find her again. Her internet is all the way down. Anything else happened? Do you think those eggs were real eggs? Did, did he post something in his stories? Oh, look. She's back. I reset my router because it was like I well, we went through the news. Okay, well, what are we talking about? What eggs? So JD Constriction posted that reel where he's like panning up to the stormtrooper and he lifts her up, but he doesn't show what's under her. Oh, okay. And she's not very. You know how she, they get like really tall when they're the eggs are really big, like they're right. they're like beehived around a tall. Yeah, she's very Ooh. low to the ground. So everyone's like, it must have been slugs or it must have been eggs or why would he post it? It's such like a weird tease. And I'm like, if she had slugged out, would he tease people this much? Or is it going <laughs> to backfire on him? I'm sure she didn't slug out. She just is a really poor eater. And he said that on multiple interviews. And so it's taken her a really long time to get to size. And so like generally poor eaters, like first time clutch is like three or four eggs. And they're generally very small. So you don't get that beehive effect. But then why would he be so weird about that? The real? Because he can. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's a funny guy. You saw, right? Uh-huh. I mean, she looks nice, but she does look really small. Yeah, she is very small. It took a lot of years for her to get up to where he was even comfortable breeding her. So this is the first year that he's tried it. But she's one of those girls that is like, hmm, maybe I'll eat once a month. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right. I decided to skip uh, CRISPR and NFTs or whatever because I just stopped caring about him <laughs> between this week and last week. Okay. Do we want to talk about the drama that everybody wants to hear about? I guess. Sorry, this is a whole lot of you talking and a whole lot of me not having good internet, apparently. Yeah. I don't know what you're doing over there. Probably baiting. Aiden? I don't know what that means. <laughs> Did you watch Idiocracy? I always assume when like the internet's down, somebody's baiting in the house and they're using all the internet for their stupid anime porn. Oh. <laughs> and I'm like, stop baiting. <laughs> oh, baiting. I get it now. Uh, no, I, I was not. I do use a lot of, uh, of internet on school, but I haven't done it. I don't do anything and everything's off because I'm podcasting today. Yeah, it, it did work. Balls and Strike said we are talking more about her now because yeah, you did not reveal great. what yeah. it was. So it's fine. I just thought it was funny. Or maybe they had like weak veins. So he's just like going to let us all stew in it till he decides if they're going to all go bad or not. Yeah, it's fine. She's fine. He's doing great. Cheers. Cheers. I wish that was something besides. So I, I. Sorry. So I think in our history, we have said things that, in retrospect, we may have felt at the time, but it wasn't actually helpful to say those things when, when we said them. Yes. So we're learning some restraint, which is weird, because we never thought we would be restraining ourselves on our own show. Yes. And I don't think it's, like, two-faced or whatever to be like, I can privately not like one action someone do does but i don't need to let's like bring that up all the time to like we don't need to stir the pot of drama real bad or something because otherwise they're fine right yep okay so if somebody does something on their live that's not good to me even if i disagree with it and i'm trying to disagree with it <laughs> 
actively in the comments. I don't may think that makes them a terrible person because they said something I didn't like. I've said lots of things people don't like. And I don't you know think I'm saying? a terrible person. I'm just, especially when you're alive. I mean, you have to have a certain amount of grace for the people who are on podcasts live because when you're pre recorded, sometimes you get fired up. You know, like Jessica was real upset earlier. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you get fired up and you run your mouth without mm -hmm. thinking about the consequences of what's going to happen and there's no edit button and so and sometimes even when there is an edit button you're too stupid to recognize you're just you're just stupid and so i think that we all need to give each other a little bit of grace and if that person can <sighs> fix that or make it better then like, they should be given a respectful opportunity to do so and so yes there's a lot of drama happening and i don't feel like i should weigh in because i'm not involved in the drama but i think people noticed that you were involved in the drama a little bit and maybe that's why they're asking you yeah, I was involved because I like all relevant parties. Yeah. What an idiot. They came to a, a conclusion of okayness, right? Hmm. Oh, maybe not. Okay. I Yeah, I don't think everything is perfect. Many things were said to many people and things were better on some parties. But it is a... Raven's Odyssey asked what Jana was drinking. I don't know what's in that can, but the can is labeled. Uh, I just opened it on the show, so mm, we'll see. <laughs> you it's... have to read it to the people. If you're oh, sorry for the people it. who are listening. I'm drinking Starbucks Double Shot Energy in vanilla. Yeah, I don't know how to be political about this, and I'm sure people would be like, "I want you to say that." Fuck that person, or whatever, or the opposite. But I think that would just contribute more problems, right? You know, I mean, I'm not involved at all, and I'm willing to say, you know, MJ did a live, and he said some things that I think that he rethought after, and like I said, I've had moments like that, where you say things, and then later you're like, I was actually just, like, firing off the hip, and, and maybe that's not how I wanted to present myself, and so I think And he that, might still, like, believe that stuff inside. Yeah, and so, you know, it but created a problem, and then... Um, Brian called them on it and they're going to have to work that out. I, mm -hmm. I think that pot stirring and drama adding isn't really why we're podcasters. Um, there are other people who are probably going to weigh in on it, um, but that's not really our shtick. Right? So Aaron said MJ asked to be on our show. Did he? He kind, he kind of did. And then he kind of asked to be on Brian's show. And I don't sure know if I want like, does it help anybody, even us or him, to be like, to for me to explain to MJ why I think it's a good thing that Kayla and Brian made friends? I mean, I already said it like three episodes ago when I highlighted that episode in the news. I think it's always good when people make nice, no matter who's like... We have said this so many times at Nadia, circle. yeah, that there needs to be a respect to each other, even yeah. if it's you don't agree. Um, according to MJ, Wizard Moore says that we are not on his level. We aren't. Period. Right, but what? But the levels are like different. They're different. We're not even to trying me, to be the like, same. It's not like this. It's more like he's on an island in Bermuda. <laughs> We're on in Iceland. Like it's not even. I. We're not even. If he wants to think about it like this. That's not how I think about it. So I don't care. Right. I, I mean, but uh, he has more viewers. He has more downloads. He has more content, but we don't do the same things. And so, and also like somebody said, like, if you're like, there's room for everybody. And if you're in competition, then you're not confident in who you are or something. I can't remember the exact phrasing, but it's like, we're going to keep doing our thing and it's very different than what MJ does. And we do talk about MJ on our show, especially because he asks every interview, you know, about biosecurity and we advocate for biosecurity and we love that he does that. We think that it's so important that he's doing that to normalize it in interviews, to normalize it in everyday conversation. Um, but we're not going to agree on everything and we're not going to do everything the same way as him. Um, and yeah, it's not a, a level like this, but if you're going to put it like this, yeah, he does have more downloads. Yeah, he right. is better known. I mean, there's some but people we've... that don't, haven't even heard of us and everybody knows who MJ is. And so I don't think that that's 
a valid point of discussion on what they were trying to talk about. Like our amount of downloads doesn't matter to the fact of whether or not what he's saying is respectful or not. Right. Maybe. So uh, to me, it's a little, it was a little problematic to be like, I don't have to be friends with anybody who's below me. Like that's weird to me. Yeah. He doesn't have to be my friend, but I want to be his friend and his supporter. Correct. So being respectful would be nice, but he, yeah. he doesn't have to be. He's an adult. Yeah. He and I, I did choices. talk to him privately many times and I, we are still friends. Um, but he's got to know that I don't think Kayla and Brian are bad people to, that I have to also not be friends with to be friends with him. I think he understands that. It's fine. Yeah, he just was really excited when he was talking at that moment, and he was hurt in his heart. Yeah, I yeah, mean, he should have done Brian shows if he was going to say he was going to. He chose not to later, so maybe he didn't want it to blow up even more. Which is what we're trying not to do as well. Right, like, we're trying not because we're all still drama. friends. Let's keep being friends. Yeah, or, just or like at least respectful, respectful to each other, even if we don't have to be friends. But somebody's position in the podcast hierarchy if that's how you're going to look at it rather than we're all in this industry but we're talking about something different and doing a format that's different than what he's doing and our goal isn't to be the most famous podcast with right the most if downloads. we were trying to be the most famous we would probably do exactly what he's doing <laughs> probably yeah i like, mean in terms of like interviewing high status profile readers names. about Correct. relevant things at the time it's happening that's how i would do it too but we've very weirdly and explicitly chosen to interview very weird and specific <laughs> people at Niche very people. specific times right um we I mean, look just... like people who aren't trying that hard but we actually are we're trying to <laughs> make a, a different kind of show that doesn't rely on people who are famous to bring in views right. we want you to be here because you want to hear about worms crawling in jana i don't want to that's why i left guys. that's jana why my internet actively. broke it was like no deal i mean i just i think that mutual respect is is great like i've been going on a number of podcasts that have i think similar download numbers to us and nobody was like oh you guys are too shitty for us you can't come on you know they were all very gracious and there's even a podcast that i'll be going right on. we're so shitty i'm glad anyone <laughs> anyone listens either or even shows up for the live Jana on anything god right. bless them good yes that, and i feel like that was respectful and there's even a podcast that i'll be going on that we've had some disagreements on what we said on our show that they felt you know maybe how you guys are feeling about mj about us and yet they're still being respectful right. and allowing me to come on they their have, show. They've given us so much grace. We are yes. such barbarians. And I can we, only offer MJ grace exactly. in the hope that he can find a resolution. Because so many people have turned over leaves that I was so surprised about this year. Yeah. They're like, whoa. Whoa, look what never you Never thought it would happen. And we all it's have It's usually things. just like talking to people. People talk to people and then leaf was flipped. Holy shit. Yeah. And so and yeah. Let's not, you know, put down the pitchforks, put down the flames, you know, um, and let's try to be respectful and give grace. And Chris did a great job managing it because he's friends with Brian. On he's friends show. with both of them. Yes. Yeah. And so, he's like, whoops, oh, poor, right in the middle, like, ah! <laughs> <sighs> um, so yeah, I mean, it's a hard situation because we're all in the same right Brawls and sphere, strike. even if that people are putting it into a pyramid system and we're, you know, at, at the bottom. Um, we all are in the same area covering the same types of topics. And so I think if we can just all be respectful to each other and leave room for disagreements and leave room for differing opinions um, without slaughtering someone when they either misspoke or they say something that we don't necessarily agree with, um, give, give him a chance to explain themselves and you may not still agree with him when he explains himself but I don't think that that means that they need to be cancel cultured or anything like that because I think that even someone who does something you don't agree with um, can still contribute um, in yeah. this, this format I, I really feel like MJ has like an earnest desire to help animals like he wants to take care of animals at the highest level he can he changes so he, his water every day like i can't even matter how much time that would take that's incredible like he's i strive for that his animals so like to me uh, like i'm a single issue voter 
<laughs> on almost all, it's like if you take care of your animals to the highest level possible you must get my vote so that means almost every human who does a good job by their animals i have to like so right. sorry i mean the, so like he had a lot of things that we don't like even if he said he hated our podcast um we're going to continue to say good things about his podcast when he does things that we do agree with and things that we right. do admire because he does say a lot does he need to talk to brian or fig figure this out maybe but that's not for me to say and that's for him and brian to decide right and so hopefully you know, they can hopefully they can work it out in a respectful way because we all have to like coexist in this environment um whether or not we're on the same level i don't think it matters we do have to coexist and be respectful of each other because we're not going to all agree and we're not going to all say the same things yeah. i mean chris eaton talks about nido virus all the time does he think it's stupid hell yes he does but we try to you know, highlight when he does talk about Nido because it's good for the industry when he's discussing it, even if his opinion isn't the same as ours, it's still an important discussion that's happening. And so like there just is, we're adults. We need to act like it. This is not high school. This is not middle I school. I wish I was an adult though. <laughs> we have to work things out and we have I'm to- I'm still 14 year old boy, remember. Try to do better. And when one of us messes up, remember that you've messed up too. So, mm -hmm. you know, I have definitely messed up. I have definitely gotten- overexcited about things and said things that have had consequences and that's part of being an adult and so if we can just give everybody a little grace and let them work it out hopefully they will and right it's, a, and it's okay to be like it's okay to have your own opinion and, and be, be like fired damn that it. was fucked up yeah but like, i don't know but how we're to not gonna weigh in any... on that yes well i mean i guess i did oh okay. i was just yeah. like stop stop i did like the pewdiepie stop i was like <laughs> this is going on too much stop <laughs> But what do I know? I uh... I think that, you know, maybe that some of his, oh, I'm better than them. I mean, he's worked really hard to come from a really hard life to get where he is today. And he's had to make a lot of personal sacrifices and a lot of personal growth. And I, I think we all need to remember that, that he's worked really hard. And so, you know, he's very passionate about what he's built. And so if we can try to understand where he's coming from, we may not agree with how he went about it or what he said or think he's in the right at all. But um, I think that Brian led the way with the example. He responded in a very you know level headed and respectful way. And that that's mm, you don't, don't think so. I, I think it was level headed. I don't know if it was as respectful. Well, it was more level-headed than yes, what was, was being thrown at him. I don't and know if so... repeating the word pussy over and over was... It was funny, granted. <laughs> okay, that's fair. But that's what we're shooting for, is just mutual respect, even if we disagree on things, or even if right. people and, say and things And all this is coming from, like... like, we are absolutely barbarians. So, like, we have fucked this up <laughs> so bad, like, <laughs> ten times already. So, right. like, whatever way I can make people resolve stuff cool willie or at least stay in your own lane that's great i will congratulate any two people who are formally beefing to get back together and are just they like just cool get to again. a ground of neutral you need well, all, I mean, all the high praise please right if billy and kayla can billy and an kayla standing and then Holy she can shit. offer her um oh, wait, 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 wait. private information you're sharing oh, has that sorry. been publicly released i don't know i thought it had Sorry, no, never mind. Come on. Woo! See, Woo. now I'm gonna get in trouble for misspeaking. You see, it, it happens. It happens, you know. Like, but I just think it, if those two can work it out, then there's hope for everybody else. And I hope that they're able to work it out into a, right, a place two. that they both feel better he about. He called it. her a cunt for four hours on a live. <laughs> yes, and they did. still figured it out. And they Holy did. They figured Matthew. it out. And so I think that anything's possible and i hope that they work it out and i think that we've spent way too much time talking about this so what do we have anything else we need to talk about not really now we're just in like collection updates we've been skipping collection updates a lot i have like a couple minutes left uh yeah mj gets carried away at times and he has entertaining shows that you do like to watch sometimes he gets like a, a clutch guest at the right time and they have a juicy deet that we needed like when he had yeah. elevation reptiles on so we need MJ, and we need Brian, and we need Kayla, and we need Billy, and we need Jana's assistance. So, thank you. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there's this, there's room for us all, but maybe not necessarily on the same podcast. <laughs> right. Your assistance can only be on certain podcasts at That's this right. point. That's right. 
Don't worry, Adam. They will be put away for your podcast on Tuesday. I need you to take Adam to task. To me. task? Mm-hmm. About what? He's a real, a real um, good little crybaby about biosecurity and stuff. Oh. Every time they have some sort of like biosecurity topic, he's like, I don't understand it. I'm just going to play dumb or, or, you know, that seems like whatever. Every time they talk about it, I'm just like. Well, it's, I mean, it's totally the Matrix moment. You know, you can take the pill. And you can wake up and just continue as you were. Well, I need or you, you to be the, the giant red dildo pill right up his butt. And and it can just it's like an alter of facts. And it's right. it's a hard pill to swallow down. You know, it's real big and it gets stuck in your throat and nobody's getting pleasure out of it. And mm-hmm. you know, it was not my favorite to swallow that pill, even though I knew I I was gonna and I knew I had to. And so I can relate to not wanting to it t- takes some of the fun out of the hobby and it takes some of the carefree woohoo i'm a ball python breeder out of your step and so right yeah maybe well, I'm saying is, his show great. is good it's very good yes entertaining and pretty nice that it's like not about enemas but i'm always Will's like hella heat our podcast local whore man um has said that billy has talked about that on show okay I thank thought. god I I it was private it. like three weeks ago when i talked about it on the phone with random person number 72 and yeah so I, I thought sure. that it had been shared publicly that he All had right. in, invited so, yeah. her to help him learn about nida virus I thought right that that so was so that had said. happened on the phone but there's a, a more intense thing that's happening oh, i don't even know about soon. that so that's not what i was talking about i was just talking about okay sorry sorry him. there's too many secrets too many secrets. That's why that's why you're the person to call because they all know I have a fat mouth. <laughs> um, um I don't even know what I was talking about. Uh proper royals. Oh, right. So maybe he'll let us talk about biosecurity. I don't know. He may not be comfortable with that. And I want to go on people's shows and be respectful, not be controversial. Right. So. Mostly talk about the, the, the voting and what yeah, but you're gonna have to talk about what you like believe in or why someone should vote for you. Well, I will. Isn't that I, about but biosecurity? I'm not gonna like Adam, why don't you have bias? Yeah, here? no, nobody should lecture except for me because I'm the only one. You're the lecture lady. I'm not. Pedantic. I'm the fun. I'm just girl saying girl with that's always been like the great omission like of like his show cool. is he never talks about anything uh, actually important. Uh, Brian, let's not let's not hate on other people. Okay, I, calm it down over there. Hmm, yeah, you're Adam. starting some some real MJ stuff over there. <laughs> It's just like a weird, like such an, an omission. It's because the show is otherwise totally fine. They're like, this morph is fun. And this, and I'm breeding this and I do this. And, and every other show talks about it and his doesn't. Brian's show talks about it. MJ's show talks about it. Uh, Chris's show talks about it. I'll ask him. It, it, we'll see. Okay, good. Thank you. I'll bring it up, but he may not want to talk about it. It doesn't need to be a fight. It just needs to yeah. be like, not why, don't, why don't you talk about it too since you have living things that you keep yeah even to say stupid is yeah i mean it just needs to be yeah if he's like i don't believe in diseases they're not real like if he said that i'd be like okay that's why he doesn't talk about it i but i have just said i don't know or it just it just does he doesn't experience it enough yet or i mean for some people it's really scary i know when i shared my story on the podcast i literally thought people were going to come to my home and burn it down with their little pitchforks and be pissed off because i said i had nido and um you know i know no. that there are some people that just don't feel comfortable sharing those kinds of stories because they feel like it'll be an end to their business and so i don't know maybe he'll let me dive into it if we do it in a respectful right. way i'm totally you interview that. him to, to uh <laughs> on his show put, a, put him on like a couch and be like let's let's open up maybe he's like no oh, i can't put him on a couch it has to be family friendly <laughs> whoa it's me like you know figure out what what's going on over there it's very strange okay um you gotta go get my collection oh collection updates good okay go ahead i will get my munchkin in like 10 minutes but Mm. none of my ball pythons are building follicles have you checked your ball pythons nope that's on the list this weekend uh, to do to do ultrasounds on everybody i have a couple of girls that were supposed to lay that haven't um so i do need to ultrasound them and see if they reabsorbed or if i just got the pre pre ovulation shed and they have one more shed to do but um that's pretty much it i started writing out my pairings for the year i need to get a baseline um ultrasound and i plan on pairing like in the next couple of weeks depending on what those numbers look like if nobody's building 
then I'll probably put it off a whole another month and do another ultrasound in four to six weeks and then decide. Um, Cause I really felt like initial locks of the season that I did last year. Cause last year was my first season with the ultrasound and Jessica and I kind of did this experiment together of everybody gets initial locks and, and then you mm -hmm. wait That's an ultrasound. It was such a waste of energy for those males and mm -hmm. I'd rather keep them on food. And, and a lot of people mm -hmm. actively disagree with that. That's fine. They can't. Right. I just, like, I showed no difference doing that other than just wasting the male's time. And like, if they weren't building every three months, I gave them another lock just because it felt like I wasn't breeding those females, but that didn't, that didn't encourage anything, either. encourage anything. They do what they're going to do was what I found out with an ultrasound. And so pairing females that are doing nothing is a waste of the male's energy and reserves. And mm -hmm. I, I, this year, this season, I completely will do it differently. If a female never builds the whole season, then she's not going to get any locks that season. Um, and I'll just keep watching her, but it did not encourage anything. And those, you know, if every three months, so they've gotten, this, you know, three locks and never did anything all season. That's three times that that male was in there for three days that he didn't need to be. So mm -hmm. that's how I'm going to approach this season. I even gave like 20, 20 girls who were at the right weight initial locks to see if it would do anything it did not so um if they're not at 15 or whatever they're getting they're getting no love from the men so mm -hmm. they better they better figure it out if they want some love um yeah because i have been feeding heavy or whatever most of them aren't even like in a condition where they should want to build follicles so it's not like surprising or something the ones yeah. that are eating frozen salt really well might build, start building in like, I still think like January. So that's why I'm like not stressed at the Ultramel, this small, the Ultramel Cryptic. But yeah, my season next year, I just have a feeling it's going to be really weird and light because I moved and. Yeah, that's normal. All the boas are like, you want me to have sex? I don't fucking think so. Yeah, it's not. not it. It's only rained like once since I got here. So fuck you. And then the corn snakes. It's not cold enough here. So I my location for Brumation was the storm shelter. The storm shelter is seventy degrees. It is underground. The ground is seventy degrees around here. It's like living in a fucking tropical paradise or something. So they these animals wouldn't. Uh... We're gonna be in the twenties next week, and I might have to bring my king snakes inside. Or like so they don't freeze. So they don't freeze to death. Like I might have to put them in a different area for a week because it's getting so cold outside. Or put like turn on their heat to like 50 or something. Right. right. Because it's gonna be 20s. And I'm like, I've got I've got king snakes out in the garage brewing. <laughs> so I had fed like starved the adults, so didn't feed them to empty them out. And and I was just like waiting for a week where the ground would at least get into like the 60s. And it just hasn't happened yet. So, so they're hungry and grouchy and hot. Yeah, well, I unplugged them so they were at least at like snake room temperature ambient, but mm -hmm. it's kind of warm. So I fed them all last night. I was like, I give up. I'm just going to wait more. So there's no way they they could have gone down October first, which is when I normally put them down. And now it's November. <laughs> I have to feed them and like maybe try in January for like a quickie. Oh, it's gonna put your season really late too. Like, what do people Which do in your area? Fine. Do they use like a wine? Some people cooler use coolers, and some oh, okay. people do use the ground. But I have like a storm cellar in the ground. It's really big. I can put lots of little Tupperwares of stuff. But the ground is not cold. <sighs> uh, Balls and Strike says they give a lock to spur on focal development. Oh, it's only if they're already building. If if they if weren't at, like, already at 14 15, or something, yeah, they're, they're not they're, they're not going to just magically start unless they want to do anyway. Yeah. Um, even Billy Mutation Creation has said many, many times, because he runs a lot of girls and a lot of males, and he said that unless they're 12 to 15, they never get a lock until then. And then he waits till they're like 25, 30, and then they get a second look, and that's all he does. Because he's got some really high value males, and he wants to conserve energy and be able to put them to as many as he wants marshall can we ever have you on uh, the, the show i want to know about the the old days when you were full-time and like when you decided to not be full-time anymore like what was the is that a weird request 
live on the episode. You just got you just got an invitation live, so she can't <laughs> even take it back later. I just think about it as like uh, if someone yeah, was doing years. okay live for four for or live full time for four years, what's the the like the impetus that you're like fuck it's not working because right now we've only seen like we're going full time i want to see, see the, the process backwards the like choosing to and he didn't get out completely he's still here he still has some snakes and he has fun but what was the the difference that's what i want to know jana because i think the getting out or like oh he said yes all right let's do it i don't know when you'd have to be available at the stupidest time which you, i he's guess you're here, here in the live right but he's not always here Right, so my AC is like an under or my sh- my thing is like an underground thing. So I'd have to run a pipe for the like effluent air. Yeah. Up you have to be the really stairs, careful with that. Yeah. Up the stairs and it maybe like dump it into the garage, but if it want you wanted to go outside, it would have to go up 50 feet cuz it's like a storm shelter inside of the house. Which is cool if a tornado comes. But turns out not that cool to. For, we to also need concepts. like a, a Jessica's new setup video oh, or like tour soon. Or I don't know though. when. Yeah, I need to see. So, um, Marshall says he can be kind of negative about his experience. Um, That's okay. I love that. Okay. Actually, you're okay with negativity. I mean, give it to us real. So if it makes you mad to talk about and you get mad, that's that's allowed here. Um, it, it's real. So I mean, like, yeah. I mean, if you look at the, some bigger people who have gotten out they're they're mad too <laughs> um so i feel like that's that's an honest... like the ghi people what was what was the name of the 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 owner does anybody know in the chat like yeah, i want to know the girl. first person who touched the ghi's butthole right and then they had that and then they were like this isn't exciting enough for me to continue doing it because they did really well off the project apparently but then that was still not enough to keep the motivation up so I think how people think after the fact is more, way more interesting than 90% of shit we talk about, like what we're talking about right now. Because <laughs> you would want to like prepare or agree before you've wasted a lot of money and time. And be like, oh, okay. Or yes, I will prepare for that mental state or whatever. That would be legit. Anything else going on with your collection? Nope, just gearing up for the next season. Um, I haven't been feeding this heavily, uh, probably like every two weeks. So I need to start feeding weekly to the girls that need it and um, get some weight on the boys because I mine are always small. <laughs> Your animals are so small. I think it's because you feed them like a little ASF hopper. That's what I'm assuming. Oh, too, not many of my often. animals eat ASF. It's okay. just like the real stubborn ones. Most of mine are on frozen thawed. I think all of my males are on frozen thawed. I just was giving them weans and now I give them smalls per your advice. Um, Aaron asked if we would be interested in talking to a gecko person. Yes, I just need Absolutely. a gecko person to uh, consent. And they would have to have actually like tested a little bit or at least thought about testing. Because a lot of them are like, I don't test anything. I just do like an intake colony and like a yeah. next colony, which is fine. But it's more interesting... There, there's a person who has who has like an old blog post. They're like, yeah, it got into my crested geckos from my leopard geckos. And they're talking about like long-term keeping these crested geckos alive. I tried to get that person, but they never responded to my email. Will tell Heat said it was Matt Lear. Do you think someone like that would ever come back on to like a, a current reptile podcast to explain like the most embarrassing, traumatic thing of their life? Can we want to pick at that one thing that you like? Loose sleepover, sure, yeah, I come know. talk to well, us. That's sort of what the Joe one was, right? Is like, why did you, why did you advocate for something and then choose to give up on it? Right. Well, life changes, situations yeah. in life change. But um, I, but like his mental state is like the most important part of that. I think RN is offering themselves. They said oh, they hell have done. Yeah. Okay, yeah. who is RN? I'm sorry, I'm dumb. I don't know. The like, registered nurse. They have right? a bachelor's. And like... okay, I know what an RN is. What's their business? And are you a woman? Because I'm assuming pronouns now. And I have nothing to base that off of other than RN, which is really sexist. Lisa asks, when do you offer your first meal for a ball python? Well, RN types. So I used to do it. And I have to go after like this question. Okay, well, I used to do it 
like they stay in the incubator until they shed and then they go into the bin and then they, you know, three to five days to get used to being in the bin and then you offer. So that's like two and a half, three weeks. Um, but I found that most of them didn't eat that first week anyway. And I know that Justin waits two weeks after they get put in the rack. Um, so like three and a half, four weeks. And I've started doing that and I'm having a greater success of first offering, getting a first eat, like a first meal. And so that's what I've been leaning more towards. What do you do, Jessica? Mm, I usually just, I don't, I fuck around and then I find out. (laughs) No, I'll just sometimes I'll leave them in with their siblings shed for a couple of days. They need to be hungry to want to eat. So it's a minimum like the next week or whatever. But sometimes it's the next two weeks. But they might have been in the incubator still like four or five extra days after all shedding because you're waiting for like the little wiener one to shed. (laughs) But the bigger ones that were like more robust have shed first Then they pip first. So like, yeah, two weeks sounds like a great start you can start offering frozen thaw it does they don't always take frozen thaw right away but a lot of them do and i then, do i have like one in four will take frozen thought of first offer uh Aaron says he is a rick a pickle rick if you will at creative corolophus that's cool send me a message on instagram we'll see if we can make something happen unless jania is busy uh and says i can't interview you for some reason (laughs) i'm here every week (laughs) all right (laughs) well yes a lot of times i'm like yeah you can interview and i'm like fuck i have to ask jana and then i'm like oh i don't think i can ask jana and then but (laughs) but you've been tricked into it because it's all live it's all live it's it's live and i said yes so now we'll do it next week yeah for lisa says white lips four weeks which makes sense because they're a slower metabolism thing so who knows how much egg yolk they have absorbed and how long it takes a little carpets and stuff sometimes they take forever all right i gotta go though for real though thank you everybody godspeed smash the dumb like button please i yes. look at so many pictures of worms for you people yes like worms subscribe and share and viscera. comment Ugh, please double check if your worms have worms please and any wild caught snake from Southeast Asia can have this kind of worm too. So that means, you know, fine snakes and wild caught rat snakes, they all need to be treated, but it is treatable. It's not a virus. Please do. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye, Jana. Thank you. Oh, this check is- me out on Proper Royals on Tuesday. Tuesday, I'll be there. Harassing. Harassing. Nicely. <laughs> <laughs>